Tigers off to a 2-0 start in Big 12 Conference play, 11-3 overall. Reed, how about the Dodge Keys for the Tigers today? Well, the Cyclones are going to go on runs. What you've got to do is keep it from being double-digit. Quinn Snyder right now, he's looking at an 8-0 run, called a good timeout, and then bench scoring for Quinn Snyder. His bench against Nebraska scored two points. Mm. The next game against Colorado, they scored 32 points. And that's because there's three talented freshmen coming off the bench, but they're freshmen, and you never know what kind of consistency you're going to get from freshmen. One of those freshmen in there right now, Wesley Stokes off the bench. He's guarding Tinsley. Good back screen by Paul Shirley. Sullivan, great shooter. Got wide open for a good look at a three, but a little bit strong. Good move and a solid pass, Arthur Johnson. Nice transition offense, it's a spread, four out, one in. Arthur Johnson just working to create a passing angle. Good patience by Missouri to find that angle for the easy basket. Johnson coming off a 19 rebound game against Colorado. Sullivan, he got fouled on his way to the hoop. Count the basket, he'll go to the line. Well, our Cargill alumni achiever, Cheryl Crow, that's right, graduate here at the University of Missouri. She's won Grammy Awards for Best New Artist, Best Female Vocalist, and Record of the Year. Cheryl Crow, once upon a time, matriculating here at the University of Missouri. Sullivan hits the free throw. That's not unusual. Jake Sullivan has hit over 90% of his free throws this year. Well, and it's important the way Sullivan got that shot. He's such a tremendous three-point shooter that you think that's all he can do. But he can put that ball on the floor and go and had 18 points earlier this year all inside the three-point line. Good pass. Lobbed it in. Stokes to Johnson. He lost the handle, but it goes out of bounds off of Iowa State. Wesley Stokes did a great job of recognizing Jamal Tinsley got stuck down there on big 6'10. Arthur Johnson spread it out. Johnson's been, he's playing so confident, calling for the ball and constantly creating passing angles. And the second semester does something to those freshmen, doesn't it? Gilbert, he can't nail the easy chip shot. Cyclones, as Stacey was telling us earlier today, that he thought his big men could run in the big men of Missouri. And you saw Rancic, he beat Johnson down the floor. Gilbert, he's fouled by Tinsley. That's Jamal's first. Jamal Tinsley in his senior campaign out of San Jacinto. Of course, you know his story growing up in Brooklyn. A real project, didn't go to high school. Goes on to San Jacinto and has really not only turned his career around, but his life around. That's interesting. He says, you know, I looked around and I saw all my friends making something of themselves. And he said, you know what? I was a legend on the playground. And Larry Eustace, he took a chance. He said, look, I'm going to go get a kid. Everybody says, oh, he's a, he's a playground legend. You can't control him. You can't get him to play in a system. Well, he's only one of the best point guards in America. Absolutely. Stokes. And we've got a whistle and a foul. Trying to keep Sayoye out of the paint is Ty Ray Pearson. You know, that's one of those situations that Ty Ray's got to be smarter than that just because Sayoye just got the ball, was down there point blank, bobbled it twice. He's not a huge offensive threat down there. If he ever becomes a threat down there where he catches the ball and scores, it's really going to make this Tiger team tough. Brian, boy, knife to the basket, and a great pass from Gilbert. One of those freshmen we were talking about, a McDonald All-American, Trayvon Bryant, has only been on campus three weeks, has only been practicing. I mean, you talk about the sets and the defensive sets, and we watched Quinn Snyder. This isn't easy stuff. They're running complicated stuff. Freshman's going to get better every minute he's on the floor. And a bit of a coming out party for Bryant against Colorado, where he scored a dozen, and surely saying my fault as Bryant was there defensively. But one of the things that Brian, you know, not only does he doesn't know the sets, but his teammates don't really know him. He wasn't here on campus. He was at Maine Central Institute for the first semester, achieved his test score, was eligible immediately because he had his grades. So this is just kind of a feeling out process as they get to know each other. Gilbert. Oh, that was halfway down for Clarence Gilbert. It won't go. A real streak shooter, Clarence Gilbert. Good pass. Tinsley. Boy, he knows where his teammates are. Tyree Pearson with an easy two. Stokes 
Stamps. He beats Tinsley off the dribble, and then he throws it away. Wesley Stokes a little bit out of control as he goes to the hoop. Quinn Snyder's got his hands full with Tinsley, and he knows it as Iowa State leads by four. In the hot seat of ESPN's two minute drill. Feel your heart pump and your adrenaline build as you race the clock. Now you can be in the hot seat at home. ESPN's two minute drill, the ultimate sports quiz show, comes to the PC with ESPN's two minute drill CD ROM. Test your sports knowledge with host Kenny May and other ESPN personalities such as Rich Eisen, Tom Jackson, and Charlie Steiner. ESPN's two minute drill CD ROM. Available wherever software is sold. Attention, speed freaks. If you want to get the driver's seat for the best NASCAR races ever, then start your engines. Because every Sunday at 4, ESPN Classic is reinventing the wheel with three hours of smoke and pedal to the metal mayhem. See the greatest names in NASCAR history gun for victory lane. We're coming into your living room full throttle. So break out the Shasta. It's Classic NASCAR every Sunday at 4, only on ESPN Classic. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. On the string mostly of that 8-0 run, Larry Stacey's club with a four-point advantage at the 11:36 mark of the first half. Hey, fans, you can win a trip to the Big 12 tournament and possibly a million dollars from Bank of America Investment Services Incorporated. Visit Big12Sports.com or call 800-446-0938 to enter. Iowa State with the basketball and the four-point advantage. Look for Missouri to press full court coming out of timeouts and also after made free throws. Horton. Unheralded Horton. And Tinsley's the guy in the backcourt that gets most of the attention, but Horton, the Big 12 player of the week. These Missouri Tigers are so well coached by Quinn Snyder. We watched them today and shoot around every offense, every set that the Cyclones have run. The Tigers have known exactly the call. The bench is over there calling the plays. The players have executed what they practice perfectly so far. Gibbert off to a bit of a slow start for Clarence. Just one of six from the field so far. Out of bounds. It will belong to Missouri again. Pass a little bit low inside to Johnson, the man they call Doc. And you wonder, well, why they call Arthur Johnson Doc? Actually, it's his middle name, Doc. No, oh, it's because he's bigger than a Doc. <laughs> you Doc, big old aircraft carrier. Gilbert knifes his way in. When you talk to Quinn Snyder about Gilbert and the advances and, the, and how his game progressed in the offseason, that's the first thing he points to. He's always been able to shoot. The Clarence worked so hard with this Mizzou staff on being able to put the ball on the floor and take it to the basket. Pearson got it off the glass. Good move. Up and over Justin Gage. there defensively and maybe altered the shot of Paulding. Horton almost lost it out of bounds. I would say they'd like to control tempo and keep this more of a half-court game if they can. Now they spread the floor. It's funny as we talked to Eustacia about this, Larry said, look, that's how you cut down on turnovers. You have to be more patient on the offensive end. The problem is the more patient you are, Larry says, the, the, the greater the chance of having a turnover. Yes. The more passes, and as you wait and you wait, you may pass up the first shot, but you're increasing the probability that you could have a turnover. And these Tigers, again, forced 24 turnovers in their last game. And that's against a team, Colorado, that's more guard-oriented. You wouldn't think they'd turn it over that much. Power with a running one-hander. It won't go. Here comes Grauer. Rush back in the game. Shot too strong. Fight for the rebound out of bounds. It will stay with, no, it'll go to Iowa State. And up for a moment there, they might give the ball back to the Tigers. Hey, what great defense by Shane Power, 6'5 freshman from Crown Point, Indiana, did a great job just staying toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rush, and that's a good physical matchup. That's a big, strong kid. Power's big, strong kid. It can match up with Kareem Rush maybe a little bit better than the 6'1-inch Horton. Broward 
Harding Tinsley. They were teammates on a Big 12 select team this past summer, and Brower was saying Tinsley just schooled the European players. Let's on a foul on the Tigers. Yeah, Tinsley, you know, he, he doesn't discriminate. He just schools everybody. <laughs> You're he's right. one of those kids, Dave, that the tendency is he's so talented and, and he can mesmerize you with the ball that you have a tendency as a teammate to stand and watch instead of being ready for passes. And if you're not watching, one's going to bounce off your nose. Wouldn't it be fun to play with, though? I mean, if you were ready for those passes. Yeah, if not, you'd have spalding imprinted on your forehead. Another nice basket by Jake Sullivan. Again, what we talked about earlier, his ability to go ahead and put the ball on the floor. This is a kid that shoots 51% from the line. So when he pops out and he looks at the rim, you better close out on him. And you made a good point about Jake Sullivan. He's just a freshman out of Minnesota. Normally, freshmen don't shoot with that kind of percentage, and Sullivan has been able to do it. I mean, he's shooting 55 from the floor, 51 behind the line, and 91%. Usually for a freshman shooter, they have to go through an adjustment period. The game's quicker, it's harder to get your shot off, and usually when a freshman shooter usually doesn't start shooting good until usually, you know, about this time of the year. Phenomenal what this kid has done in the first 14 games. A lot of hard work has paid off. Flushing at home, Brian on the follow. Let me tell you something, if you haven't seen this kid, he is going to be something special. Not in as good a shape as he will be in another month, but he is a legitimate McDonald All-American from Long Beach, California. He is a rising star. Trayvon Bryant, remember the name. Power got lost in traffic. Tinsley will try to calm him down. Tinsley from well beyond the arc. He can't get it to go. Bryant's there for the rebound, fighting with his own teammate. Out of bounds, it will go to the Tigers. No, it's going to stay with Iowa State. It's going to stay with the Cyclones. And they said that either Grauer or maybe Paulding hit it out of bounds. You know, you would like to think that your players could communicate better. And Quinn would love to say, oh, someone's got the rebound. You call your teammate off. But you take that kind of turnover. If you've got two guys go as high over the rim as they just went, and they're battling each other, hey, that's a hustling mistake, and you always accept hustling mistakes. Blocked Good by defense. Bryant. Good defense. You're right. Brower caught with the ball. Now he gets it up to Johnson, and Balding will reset things. Pushed Good off. Yep, he did. He pushed off with the arm. The crowd doesn't like the call at all, but boy, we both saw it from our angle. So we've got a timeout. Iowa State continues to lead by four. We're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. Imperial Guard from the Forbidden City is about to meet the Wild West. I do exactly as I do it. Yeah! Yeah! Jackie Chan, Owen Wilson, and Lucy Liu. Shanghai Noon, now on pay per view, rated PG 13. De España on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. All right, now it's Iowa State led by the freshman. Yes, the freshman, Jake Sullivan. He's got seven points, and the Cyclones lead by four.
Bush hit his first two of the game, both three-pointers. He's 0 for 3 since then. And a travel on the part of Horton. Oh, give credit to Clarence Gilbert. Tremendous pressure on the ball. That's one of the things that Coach Snyder talked to his kids about. He said, look, don't let them pick up the ball and then just stand there and pick us apart. They pick up that ball, dig, get up on them, and dig, 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 dig. He forced a great turnover, Clarence Gilbert. Gilbert now with the ball for the Missouri Tigers. Boy, what a move and great balance in the air. Just no help at all. Just turn the corner and home forever off one foot. Johnson's got Evans pinned and Good stepped throw. out of bounds. Great belly up post defense. Take a look again at Clarence Gilbert and look how he just turns the corner. And after he explodes off that foot, look how long he hangs. I mean, Shane, how, how can you play better defense than that? He's got a hand in his face, but Gilbert with that great body control able to go ahead and kiss it off the glass. Now Gilbert tries a three. That was right on line, but just a little bit strong. Clarence Gilbert has certainly emerged as one of the top scorers in the Big 12. And Gilbert averaging almost 17 points a game. Good screen. Oh, what a strong move, a power move. Credit that time, Tyree Pearson had his man on the high side as Shane Power went baseline. Pearson turned and set a beautiful screen to create a driving lane down the baseline. Now Grauer for three. Gets it up over his fellow gym rat, Jake Sullivan. I'd like to come into a gym and have a shoot off with those two. <laughs> it would be a marathon. You, you better bring a sack launch because you're going to be here all day. <laughs> Good pass. Oh, you got to look to score. You get the ball down low. Sullivan can't get it to go. And look at the sticky hands of Bryant. A little more up tempo, a little more to the liking of the Tigers. A whistle and a foul away from the ball. They're going to call that one on Evans. Look at They're going to call that one on Evans. Look at Pearson right here, how he turns and seals, and you don't notice it. You think, oh, that's not a big deal. It is a big deal. I created a perfect driving lane for Shane Power. That is good, smart basketball by Tyree Pearson. Well, Pearson seals his guy. Once Power got the step on his man, it was off to the races. Rush. Boy, what a quick first step. He's so silky smooth and he can slice in there. And it's deceptive because you forget he's left-handed. So you're used to guarding right-handed guys. All of a sudden he comes across the lane with his left and slices in there. Well, the Tigers have come back from seven down to make it a two-point contest. Pearson, yeah, that's an offensive foul. He did the same thing Grower did earlier. Perfect defense that time by T.J. Sayorio. Came over and what they practice is when Jamal Tinsley's got the ball, when he puts it down, they're going to run at him. So he yeah, yeah, did a great job. I mean, for a kid that size to be able to run out, double team Tinsley, and then recover and still make a defensive play. And that's why that kid's on the floor. Stokes back in for the Tigers. Two point contest, four and a half to go, first half. Boy, look at Arthur Johnson work down there with Martin Ramsey. Stokes hits a two. Tied now at 27. And the crowd back into it. That's a scream. <laughs> Tinsley loses the handle. Here come the Tigers. Gilbert. Rush hangs on. That one partially blocked. Great, great defense that time by Cantrell Horton. What a bounce pass to Sullivan. Terrific pass from Tinsley. I tell you what, Jamal Tinsley, he may create a turnover, but he isn't going to sulk about it. Comes right back and makes an incredible, you know, and not only was that a great pass, but for Jake Sullivan to have the hands to pick that ball up off a bounce pass. High screen, Stokes works over the screen. That was halfway down. Here comes Tinsley again. He loves the ball in the open court. 
Tinsley got it. You know, you don't become a playground legend in New York from Brooklyn saying, okay, set it up, fellas. Come here. Yeah, come here. Set it up. Everybody wait. Yeah, yeah that's not much of a half-court game. <laughs> they don't talk about you much on the streets when you're talking about your half-court sets. <laughs> Shirley tried to come up over the top. And a whistle and out of bounds of the Cyclones. We have got a timeout. Wow, a torrid pace here from Columbia. Tinsley with a bounce pass of all time. What a terrific play. And the Cyclones by four. Guys, I gotta get going. No, 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 come no, on, no, man. No, 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 stay. Stay. Stay, stay, stay where you are, sit hey, down. Guys, I'm having dinner with the future in-laws across the street. All right, all right, so, unless a meteor hits that restaurant in the next 10 seconds, I gotta go. Well, good luck. Okay, my round, right? Yeah. Got a reason to celebrate? Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. You guys, you guys want to get some wings or something? You need some help? Yeah. The new Chevy Tracker LT. Just put it in neutral. Now with a powerful V6 engine. Things big. Make sure your parking brakes off. Chevy Tracker, like a rock. You're watching an instant classic, a four-overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic. A great first half here from the Hearn Center. Right now it's Iowa State, 23rd-ranked team in the country, 18th on the AP poll. They lead by four, 31 to 27. Tinsley was out of there for a while. That's when Missouri went on their run. Tinsley back in. But to get information on your favorite Big 12 team, go online at www.big12sports.com for all the basketball and conference news from around the Big 12. That bounce, I'm just still amazed by the bounce pass Tinsley just made. But it was so effortless. I mean, he's dribbling down the court and he's not looking and just Casually, perfect pass. <laughs> Threads the needle. It was perfect. Good defense. And good defense by Horton to take it away from Brush. Now Tinsley will set up. Under three to go, first half. You know, we talk about the playground legend that Tinsley is. What he also has done is he's learned when to put that aside. When to say, hey, look, that's not what the team, right there was a perfect example. Instead of forcing something, he said, look, let's pull it back out and let's do set up an offense. Shirley walked with it. Turnover for the Cyclones. The Cyclones have now turned the ball over 10 times. Maybe not as talented as a Tinsley, but one thing Quinn Snyder really likes is Grower's leadership ability. He said one of the best leaders he's ever been around. And normally somebody says, hey, uh, you know, so what? Well, you know, you're talking about somebody's around, you know, Steve Ward, Jahowski. You're talking about a guy around Tommy Emick or Trajan Langdon. I mean, yes. you're talking about the guy, the leader that Quinn Snyder was. Missouri's going to get three looks at it. Another offensive rebound by the Tigers. Good defense. I tell you what, Cantrell Horton has done a great job on the ball. That was good weak side rotation to take away a bounce pass down there at the post. Coming up at halftime, highlights from the earlier games today. The Jayhawks and Sooners, Longhorns, Huskers coming up at halftime from Studio 66. Not to mention another look at Doug Bell's wild coat. <laughs> Turn your TVs up. It'll be hard to hear him over that thing. <laughs> it might be loud here and not as loud as Doug Bell's jacket. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is the fifth possession that the Tigers have had this one trip down the floor. You cannot give them that many looks at the basket. Very unusual, too, for the Cyclones. Ten seconds on the shot clock. I don't know if uh, Gilbert is aware of it. Oh. Well, all of a sudden, made aware, throws it up from, from the Tiger. Right. <laughs> yeah, from the Tiger. <laughs> shot clock had expired, so that's going to be the call here. The shot clock has expired. Ball did not hit the rim. You laughed. You told me he'd shoot one from the animal over there on the floor, and sure enough, he pulled up from the main. I think he can get one from the nose. Well, that was out of desperation. Gilbert all of a sudden realized that the shot clock was winding down, and it's a shot clock violation giving the ball back to Iowa State. Not very good communication on that baseline out of bounds play. Somebody should have been speaking up immediately saying, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Shirley had it blocked by Bryant, but a foul on Trey Bryant. Great cross screen down there at the post by Martin Ranzik for Paul Shirley. And defensively, if you're the Tigers, when there's a cross screen underneath the basket, you cannot let the cutter go low. If he goes low side, you're beat. You've got no help, and there's going to be an entry right there, and all you can do is foul the guy. What you've got to do is push up on him, make him go over the top of the screen, and then the defender of the, the guy defending the screen is there to help and bump the guy. Do not let him go below, or you're going to spend all day either looking at him shoot layups or stand at the free throw line. And when Paul Shirley stands at the free throw line, two words come to mind. Student athlete. Uh, 3.6 mechanical engineering, already graduated, working on his MBA. He's everything that, you know, he should be the NCAA's poster child. That's exactly what you think, you, you know, in theory, that's what, that's what everyone's supposed to be. Absolutely. Master's degree might be his by the end of this year for Paul Shirley. Rush with Tinsley guarding him. Oh, man, what a shot by Rush. When he falls away, he doesn't just fall away down there at the post. Just then, he's at the elbow up there where the free throw line meets the lane. Leans back. When he leans back and falls away, he's so athletic. That's virtually unstoppable. Less than a minute to go. First half. Shot clock at 20. Here's Cioia again running at Tinsley. What they've got to do is spread the ball out like that. And then it's up to the guys down there on the baseline to zone up and not allow that pass. No, Shirley with the last four points for the Cyclone. Six-point Cyclone lead. Tigers are going to go for the last shot of this first half. Watch the double team. Rush, a three. Got it. The buzzer. Oh, man. How smooth was that? So they rush to the locker room. Kareem Rush, who started with a couple of three-pointers, ends with a three. Larry Estacey walks off his club in the lead. Quinn Snyder, his team coming back to make it a three-point ball game at halftime. When your little Lionel engineer finally calls it a night, how do you think he'll want to get up in the morning? Not with this. And not with this. Introducing the Lionel Train 100th Anniversary Alarm Clock. It's here to celebrate a hundred years of Lionel fun. The Lionel Train Alarm Clock is a wonderful miniature town, complete with trees, beautifully detailed buildings, and even people. The clock itself has an accurate quartz movement you can rely on. When it's time to get up, the train lets you know it with authentic bells, whistles, and chugging sounds as it rumbles through the town and in and out of the tunnel that's built through the mountain. When you press the alarm off button, the train stops and greets you. Good morning, all aboard. What a cheerful way to start the morning. No train enthusiast could even imagine a more delightful alarm clock. But you don't need a wake-up call to enjoy all the action. Just press the Lionel L at any time, and the little train starts its run, complete with all the sound effects. And it'll keep on running until you press the L again. It's almost as much fun as playing with your Lionel trains. Keep it in the den or family room to admire or use during the day. Or keep it in the bedroom at night. This special Lionel 100th Anniversary Collectible comes with an individually numbered certificate of authenticity. It runs on four AA batteries and even comes with an AC adapter outlet. It's yours through this special TV offer for only $29.95. Complete with a money-back guarantee if you're not delighted. 
the Lionel Train Alarm Clock will be offered only during this 100th anniversary celebration. So order now. To order your Lionel Train Alarm Clock, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-506-6400 or send check or money order for $29.95 plus $6.95 shipping and handling to Lionel Train Alarm Clock, 6960 Eastgate Boulevard, Lebanon, Tennessee. For quicker service, call 1-800-506-6400. Welcome, everyone. I'm Carl Ravitch. You've been watching an instant classic here on ESPN Classic. Of course, the game from January 13th, Iowa State and Missouri. And joining me now is our college hoops tonight analyst, Jay Billis. And Jay, just first, your initial thoughts on this four-overtime thriller. Boy, it was a great game, and it was played at such a high level. That's what made it so enjoyable to watch. You got to see two players that are going to be future pros, Missouri's Kareem Rush and also Iowa State's Jamal Tinsley. Both of them make big plays, but the biggest plays were reserved for Clarence Gilbert, who had a brilliant game with 43 points. Let's talk about the job Quinch Snyder has done. We had him on College Hoops tonight. I mean, we know what type of program he comes from, and yet he turns around a program in which last year he inherited with only one senior. He didn't have a lot of size. Just the job he's done this year for that club. Well, I think one of the things about Quinn Snyder, he's very creative with the way he coaches offense, and he really coaches guards very well. He's got a great feel for what guards can do and should do to get open, and he gives them the green light. And I really like the way he's handled Kareem Rush and Clarence Gilbert tailoring his offense so that they can find openings and structuring things for them to get shots. He's also gotten some solid play from his big guys, though. Arthur Johnson really stepped forward and played a terrific ball game. Uh, one thing he wasn't accustomed to, and most of you guys at Duke aren't, are close games. Here he's had a couple of close games, a couple of overtime games in which he's lost, and yet in this four-overtime game they obviously come out on top. How important are experiences like that? I think they're really important. That's why coaches try to give you those experiences in practice to try to simulate playing in an overtime game or a double overtime game so that you're used to executing as the clock winds down. You feel like you've been there before. Well, Quinn Snyder doesn't have to simulate that for his team. They've been there, not only in the couple of the Big Ten games they had that went to overtime, but also in this ball game against Iowa State. That was at home, and protecting your home court in quadruple overtime is an awfully nice way to do it. Uh, an instant classic, does that mean instant credibility for this club? Does Quinn Snyder's club now belong in that upper echelon of top 25 teams? And what does it really mean come March? Well, whether they belong in the top 25, I think, is a question that has to be handled over the long term. Just because you win one game against a terrific team against Iowa State doesn't mean that you belong in the top 25. But what it means in, in March, when you get not only to the Big 12 tournament, but if you're fortunate enough to get into the NCAAs, is you've been there before. You've played in tough games. And every NCAA game is a tough game where you have to execute with the game on the line in close ball games. You don't get a whole lot of blowouts in NCAA play, so you'd better be able to play with game pressure on you like you'll have in the tournament. And they certainly have had that. With Jay Billis, I'm Carl Ravitch. You're watching an instant classic on ESPN Classic. Do you love four overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic. Well, the Cyclones keeping the Tigers at arm's length, leading by three at the half. Second half just about underway. We have a little bit of time to take a peek at the leading scorers from that first half. And again, Kareem Rush leading the way. This is a leading scorer for the Cyclones you're looking at, Jake Sullivan. He had nine first half points. Shirley with eight, Power with five. Rush, by far and away, the leading scorer for the Tigers of Missouri. Maybe they need a bigger contribution from Clarence Gilbert in the second half. And also see if the Cyclones cool off at all after shooting almost 70% in that first half. If I'm the Tigers, I make a concerted effort here early, go straight into Arthur Johnson. They went to him once early in the game, maybe the second possession, scored relatively easily, and then he didn't get the ball again down there in the post. Tinsley trying to back in. A little help from TJ. And they call TJ here in Missouri. So you're yay. Horton lost the handle and off his sneaker and out of bounds. It's so unusual to have a kid as big and as athletic as TJ. He's 6'9, 240 pounds, and that's your double man. That's a guy you got playing center field, running over the double the point guard, and still athletic enough to get back. In the, and what it takes is tremendous communication rotation on the backside. Yeah, that's where I'd go. And a tough pass inside to. Arthur Johnson knocked away. Here come the Cyclones. Tinsley pulls up inside the arc. Won't get it to go. And Soyoye with a rebound. Rancic with a foul. 
Martin Rancic, eh, bothered by a sore ankle. Well, what hasn't he been bothered by in his career? Yeah, it is unbelievable. This guy's had a stress fracture in his right elbow, bone chips in his elbow, iron deficiency, had a broken toe, had a broken finger. I mean, it, it's un to see that guy without tape from his head to toe is the most unusual sight you could imagine if you're a Cyclone fan and a welcome sight. As a result of that, he's averaging 13 points a game, leading the team in scoring. You could get a doctorate just studying Martin Rancic. <laughs> Add in Paul Shirley, and you got you know, honorary degrees. Rush picks up where he left off, getting the first two for the Tigers here in the second half, and we've got a one-point ball game. Iowa State's offensive sets usually include lots of screens on the ball, so you have lots of pick and rolls. They have not been effective. They were not effective in the first half with on the screen, on the ball screens. Rancic pulls up from the wing, got it to go. Good shooter's touch by Martin Rancic. Rancic, only his second bucket of the contest. Gilbert, good defense by Tinsley. Tigers really trying to go inside to Johnson. do go to Johnson. Soft touch, but a little bit too strong. Rancic running the floor, but an offensive foul on Rancic. They say he pushed off to get free. Those big fellas can run the floor really well for Larry Eustachie, but that is terrific officiating right there. Lots of times officials get caught up and they watch the ball, especially on fast break transition opportunities. Terrific officiating that time. Martin Rancic put his arm in the middle of his back and just held him off almost like a receiver. That would have been offensive pass interference. So when they're watching the ball, by the time the ball gets to the receiver, the contact had already been made. The foul had already occurred. Yeah, separation has already been made, and it looks like, oh, a nice, easy pass that is terrific officiating well you say she doesn't think so but <laughs> that's right <laughs> he had a different yeah, opinion he had a different angle than we did <laughs> see if somebody runs at Tinsley on the double team shot a little bit short tipped up and in by Shirley Tiger fans thought that ball might have been in the cylinder good screen by Growler Ooh, that's a trap out of bounds off Rancic yes it'll stay with the Tigers great screen that time by Grower. but as soon as Soyoye got it he had to go up you can't take a step and then pump fake you can pump fake and then step and dunk but you cannot step and then show the ball. All that, though, don't take away from the terrific screen by little Brian Grau. I mean, tough kid. Soye yeah, just threw an elbow. That may be a technical. He sure did. He hit Jake Sullivan in the back of the head with an elbow. Soyoye yeah, will earn a trip to the bench. Quinn Snyder not happy at all with T.J. Tajudin Soyoye. There was a little discussion here, and I don't know if you can see it, but Soye just throws an elbow as they separate, get ready to set, and hit Jake Sullivan. See right there, you just saw it, just a little jig. Right? You know, it's one thing to play with emotion and play tough and play strong. That's not tough and strong basketball, and that's why Quinn took him out and he sat him down and said, hey, look, that, you know, be tough. You know, if he's going to the basket, you know, take his head off. Hit him as hard as you want, but, but when you're standing there, don't look around and see if the officials are looking and throw a little elbow. Shoot the free throw on a technical. You know what that probably was? That was probably retaliation. TJ probably got hit earlier and he was just responding. And, you know, like my dad always told me, make no mistake, the ref's going to catch the second ball. Sullivan, one for two from the line, a rare miss, his first opportunity. So, oh yeah, now a cheerleader on the bench. 
Iowa State has expanded the lead to a half dozen. The Cyclones with three minutes gone here in the second half, lead by six. Well, this is Missouri's ball down here, baseline out of bounds. New rule. You shoot the shots, and then you come back, and you put the ball back in play at the point of interruption. Yeah, no longer on the technical ball. Well, there are certain cases where on a technical indirect, ball, yeah. indirect and direct, and there's a difference. This is being called an indirect at the moment. See, Dave, I don't understand this rule. If the point of emphasis is to, is to reduce the physicality of the game, take away some of the, the physical and the toughness and the contact, why lessen the severity of technicals and intentional fouls? Why would you lessen the severity? It seems like that's counterproductive to what you points of emphasis on. Well, Missouri does get the ball back on the indirect technical foul. But I don't understand why at the point of interruption it wouldn't be a baseline out of yes, bounds. Yes, right. Gilbert fires a three. Got it. Nothing but net. If Gilbert heats up, the Cyclones might be in trouble. Terrific set on the sideline out of bounds play. Clarence Gilbert came off of a beautiful double screen on the weak side. Tinsley has it taken away. And a foul on Tinsley. Interesting adjustment. The Tigers in the first half were running the big fellas at the double team. This time, Clarence Gilbert, after a great three-pointer, watch the double screen. Oh, you can't see it, but he came off a great double screen. But Jamal Tinsley loves to spin with the ball. And so as you're backing him in, run in there and double team him right there. And that's good basketball right there for Clarence Gilbert. He reached around and got him for his second foul. So Mizzou coming right back in a three-point ball game. Triple screen. Rush, he lost it out of bounds. Good defense by Rancic. Well, they have tried a number of different players trying to guard Kareem Rush today. That time Rancic doing a good job, and Rush lost the handle out of bounds. I'm Iowa State. I'd go into Paul Shirley. Tinsley can't get it to go. Long rebound coming all the way back out to half court. It was tipped up by Tinsley. There's that pick and roll we were talking about. Boy, Paul Shirley wide open. Oh, goodness. Martin Rancic did not look and see his teammate Paul Shirley standing underneath the basket all by himself. And a double team of a couple of freshmen, Bryant and Arthur Johnson, double teaming on Rancic to deny Iowa State. We're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66. This instant classic is presented by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. 1935, the year the first Suburban was introduced, was a simpler time, unless, of course, you locked your keys in the car. In that case, the simpler time would be now. OnStar, how can I help you? Yeah, I locked my keys in the car. Oh, no problem. Thanks. It's the best Suburban yet. The new Chevy Suburban, like a rock. What brings broadband to the world? Texas Instruments Programmable DSP. It's the power and intelligence that allows you to personalize the web. From the world leader in DSP and analog, Texas Instruments. Eight seconds remain. Time stood still. Back. Spot. In the Classic day in history celebrates the 10th anniversary of Super Bowl 25, an all New York battle between the Bills and the Giants. Join host Dick Schaap as he looks back at classic moments in New York sports history. Classic day in history. No good. Wide right. Starts tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific, only on ESPN Classic, presented by Selson Blue. And welcome back. I'm Charlie Steiner. Missouri, no stranger to gut-wrenching contests, on December the 18th, two days after a double overtime loss to Iowa, the Tigers would travel to Bloomington, Indiana, to face the Hoosiers. Now, this game would go down to the wire, and here now, a Sports Center replay. And the eyes have it. That would be Iowa, Indiana, and Illinois. The Missouri Tigers in the middle of what point guard Brian Grauer ingeniously refers to as the Big Ten road trip portion of our schedule. Hawkeyes, Hoosiers, Illini, all in a row, all in a six-day stretch, all on ESPN or ESPN2. The kids, they love to play on TV. Didn't start well for Ole Mizzou. A double overtime loss at Iowa. 
for the Big 12, Big 10, big game, despite the absence of any national rankings. That guy's a rock and roller. John Mellencamp. Tom Coverdale. I think he's more into the whole, you know, jazz thing or something like that. He had 16, Indiana down three after being down nine. Coverdale alley-ooping to Jared Jeffries. He's a solid rookie. Number one at 18 points, 10 rebounds. Indiana up 63-62. Kareem Rush, Big 12's leading scorer. Fouled by Dane Fife. Dane Fife fouls out. Our man Rush, he would make both of the free throws. He had four points in the second half, all of them from the charity stripe. Six seconds left. Hoosiers down three. Kyle Hornsby, and Hornsby cannot find the range. Rush rebounds, fouled again. He would make those two, and the Tigers win it 68-63. The Hoosiers rallied from 17 down against Charlotte Saturday, but didn't quite get it done here. Mizzou made up for poor shooting by just shooting at a whole bunch. Rush, 4 of 15, 18 points. Clarence Gilbert, 5 of 17, 13 points. Mizzou, 14 of 16 from the line. That was key. And now we send you back to the Iowa State and Missouri game from January 13th. An instant classic here on ESPN Classic. A good ball game here from the Hearn Center. Iowa State continuing to lead Missouri. 40-37. They've led pretty much throughout. They were down 10-5 early, but have come back to lead by three. Shooters! Iowa State taking the ball out from underneath their own hoop. Tinsley pulls up for three. Got it. Jamal Tinsley doesn't shoot much, but very effective. And you really got to get a hand in his face. That's what makes the Cyclones so dangerous. All of their starters, all of them average 12 points, except for Rancic, who averages 13. And that's some good balance. It's one of those teams you don't say, oh, let's take this away, and we'll beat them. We talked about the streak shooting of Clarence Gilbert. He's hit his last two threes. Shirley lost the handle, got it back. But what happened that time, Paul Shirley did a pick and roll and nobody rotated over to Shirley at the elbow. Shirley free from the wing. Again, they're spreading out, allowing Tinsley to go one-on-one, -on -one, and then he's got the freedom to pass. Well, what's so impressive about it, they may say, oh, that was not a highlight, but Jamal Tinsley making the good, easy pass, and that's a whole lot better than the spectacular one. And Gilbert red hot right now. Exactly what Clarence Gilbert did against Colorado earlier this week. And it was late in the game, but jumped up and hit three threes consecutively. 15 now for Gilbert. Horton somehow continues to keep the handle. Sullivan behind the back pass. Rancic. What a court awareness by the freshman Jake Sullivan. All Shirley and Martin Ranzik are awful good down there on the baseline, the short corner. That's extended from the post out about 15 feet from the basket. Oh this is what Iowa State did not do last possession, where Ranzik had Shirley wide open. This time, Johnson's got Bryant over there. When you can get your big guys to pass to each other, when you get post-to-post -post passing, you're an awful good basketball team, and it makes you tough to beat. But you know, Tiger fans right now are saying, aren't those two guys freshmen? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so Bryant going to the line now. He is the first McDonald All-American at the University of Missouri since the guy named Travis Ford, who is a guard who played only one year here and then went to Kentucky. Hey, well, let's take it a step further. Aren't those two freshmen? Yeah. And, and, and Cream just a sophomore? And, and Gilbert, he's just a junior, right? Wow. <laughs> and Stokes, who's a freshman, in there for Missouri. Well, today's game brought to you in part by Cooper Tires. A lot of mileage for the money. Cooper Tires. Drive on. Horton has pretty much been held in check oh, today. Good ball save. And an offensive charge by Shirley. Cyclones aren't happy. They didn't think Stokes got there in time. Well, he may not have got there in time, but terrific communication. Watch a double team. Then someone has to rotate over for Shirley, and it's called help the helper. And this is help the helper help. Look, weak side, terrific job by Wesley Stokes. You know, they're talking about an experimental rule like the NBA where you have a no-charge zone in front of the basket. I don't like that experiment, and I hope it doesn't go into effect next year. 
but nobody asked. <laughs> Trayvon, the rules yeah, yeah. Trayvon Bryant is really open down low. Gilbert again, he's fouled. Horton got him from behind. We talked about it in the first half. Clarence Gilbert has added that dimension to his game. He's hit two three-pointers in a row, so you've got to respect it when he looks at the rim up there. And that's right, Horton's got to be all the way up there on him. But look at his feet work. Horton's not sure whether he's pushing him baseline or he's going to push him to the middle. And when you're not sure, I guarantee you, you're going to get beat to the middle. You want to go up there and put your right foot on top, pushing baseline where you know some help is. Gilbert misses the free throw. 81% from the line on the year. Gilbert who has 15 now and you can see what he's done in the second half he had six points at halftime well, this is a kid that can explode he went for 32 against Iowa went for 26 against DePaul and had 22 the other night he can put up some points and he can put them up in a hurry one point ball game Gilbert he'll take a breather see the three point shooting today both of them pretty hot. That's great numbers for both these squads. Good defense, man. Foul that one on a rush. Kareem Rush, he'll pick up his second foul. Now, I don't want to beat this thing to death, Dave, but if you're going to do a videotape on how to communicate defensively, how to help the helper, how to double team the ball, how to zone up, Missouri is executing beautifully on the defensive end. Three-pointer from the wing. Martin Rancic heating it up with Tinsley applauding from the sideline. That's Martin's first three-pointer of the year and only his second attempt. Rush. Boy, that step is so quick. Gage had it, but couldn't quite find the handle. Here comes Rancic. Oh, Rancic feels up that. over Stokes. No. Now Stokes looks up for it. I'm not sure that's the shot you want. Stokes, little stutter step. <laughs> <laughs> See, and that all started with a bad shot by Martin Rancic. If he'd have gone ahead and gone to the basket, he had a three on two. Pull it back out. But suddenly that's not just a one, that's not just a two-point turnaround. It's four points. And Stokes with a Stokes shuffle. There Rancic, you go. Again, boy, he is there feeling you it. Go. And, and what he's saying over there on the sideline, look, everything's okay. I know that was a bad shot. Came back, made a good, smart, strong move. And that's what Larry Eustace is saying to me. He's saying, hey, look, don't, don't, you, you hit a couple of shots. Don't go nuts on me. Don't go crazy. Stay within the offense, and we'll get you the ball down there where you can score. Some go about adrenaline with an athlete, but they oh, yeah. really feel it at a certain but, time. But Coach, the rim looks like a hula hoop. Yeah. I can throw it and just give me the rock. And their eyes get big. Yeah. Can't wait to score more points. You know, Rancic had a sluggish first half, only scored three points. He's got a dozen now. But the Tigers and the Cyclones playing a great one. Cyclones, they're leading by five. We're back after this from Phillips 66. Instant classic, a four-overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic. Here it's Iowa State 53, Missouri 48. Iowa State, they continue to hold Missouri at arm's length, and they're doing it again with their balanced scoring. Clarence Gilbert, he has heated things up for the Tigers here with a couple of threes, and Maurice Stokes, or excuse me, Wesley Stokes, checking into the game for the Tigers, and Stokes just hit a little jumper in front of the three-point line. Martin Rancic totally interrupted the offensive set that time by pushing on Arthur Johnson. Sullivan, that's a foul on Jake Sullivan. The Bank of America Investment Services Incorporated is giving away eight trips to the Big 12 basketball tournament, plus a shot at a million bucks. To find out more and to register, log on to Big12Sports.com or call 800-446-0938. Wesley Stokes is only shooting 65% from the line for the season, but he has been money down the line. Mm -hmm. He was 7 of 8 down the stretch against Colorado. And then earlier in a game, overtime game against Iowa, he was 6 for 7 down the line. This kid right here is the heir apparent to Brian Grower. 
And I don't want to overstate it and put too much pressure on him. But really, when you start talking about the, all the excitement, we talked about the young kids and the freshmen, the recruiting class, the sophomore, the key's going to be replacing Brian Grower, and this is going to be a top 10 basketball team in the next two years. Well, they say one of the most difficult things to do is to come in and run a program. It's almost like the quarterback of the team, Stokes, might have been of the freshmen the slowest to adjust to the coaching style here at Missouri. You know, and whether it's intentional or subconscious or subliminal or whatever, a lot of times when you play for someone who is such a great point guard and floor leader like Quinn Snyder, what he does, he ends up putting additional pressure on his guards to learn the system and to, and to run it. And they say this kid, Wesley Stokes, has that ability to step up and be a floor leader. Look out. A couple of big guys coming our way. <laughs> if, if Big Doc comes this way, you got it. No, I will step up there and take a charge. I, I'm going to run around and get the ball. <laughs> I was already behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real brave. Here, take him. <laughs> <laughs> you are a great shield. Gilbert, is he still hot after a little time on the bench? That one wide right. Horton. Well, they've held him in check today. The Big 12 Player of the Week. Only three points for Horton this afternoon. Good flash. Pearson can't get it to go. That was halfway down. Stokes almost threw it away. Good call. Is he quick? And a great follow by Johnson. Two-point ball game. Tinsley's going to come back in for Iowa State. Good double team. Again, Sayoye has done a terrific job this afternoon double teaming the dribbler. Tinsley back in for Iowa State. The Tigers make a little run. Rush also coming back in for the Tigers. So the Stars are back, and the Stars are shining brightly in an afternoon game in Columbia. Stokes a foul. Sin Tinsley said, I think Tinsley said something to Stokes like, I would have called that on you in the playground. Yeah, no, I think he said something along the lines. I'm sure the word freshman was in there. <laughs> Come on, freshman, you can't hold me. Yeah, he said, oh, that was a bad call. <laughs> good switch. Oh, good defense. Bryant stood his ground. It is so difficult, especially with a young big fella, to teach him belly-up defense. What belly-up defense is, both hands straight up, stick your chest out, and just keep your belly on him, just like that. You know, so often, big guys, I want to jump up, and I want to block it, and I want to look pretty, and I want to slap the ball. It is tough. When uh, uh, Trayvon Bryant goes 6'9", 240, when he bellies up, you know he's bellying you up. And you've got to make a heck of a move to get a shot over him. That is terrific defense, and we saw Arthur Johnson do it last time down the floor. Johnson, front end of a one and one, it won't go, and a whistle on a foul on Bryant, trying to go for the rebound. And Snyder's team can't quite catch the Cyclones. Two-point Iowa State lead. And Tinsley with a basketball. You know, one of the things I love about the Big 12, I mean, how good is the coaching in the Big 12? We got Larry Station, National Coach of the Year, and Quinn Snyder, National Rookie Coach of the Year, here on one Saturday afternoon. Yeah, and that's just to mention two of them as well. From the wing, I just mentioned Horton was kind of silent. A little wake-up call for Control Horton. He hits a big three. Back to a five-point Cyclone lead. It was interesting. Larry Eustachie is such an emotional coach, and, they, and everyone talks about the Cyclones feed off that. They've been very business-like here this afternoon. Really very nice. efficient, you know, not overly excited, not over-celebrating, just executing. Rush spins his way in, banks it up. Oh. So he just took it away from yeah. Shirley. He sure like did. A jump. Hey, now listen, Paul Shirley bench presses 375 pounds. For a 6'10 guy with long arms, that's unbelievable. Arthur Johnson just a, I mean, that was like it was a cheeseburger. <laughs> give me that thing. <laughs> Watch this. Big Doc says, uh, uh, excuse me, no, give me that ball. 
And while we were watching that, Missouri, they just scored. So the Tigers hitting a three-pointer. Clarence Gilbert, another three. And we've got a two-point ball game. Gilbert with 19 now. And Shirley's open. Pearson was open, too. Probably a rush shot after he really didn't have the handle. He forced it. You know, he set up, and he just didn't handle the ball very well. But just when you get it, you don't have to shoot it down there. Kick it back out. Take a look again at Clarence Gilbert. Again, great execution on baseline out of bounds. And, and you know, we talked about Gilbert putting the ball on the floor, and penetrating and creating things. Well, he also catch and shoots really well. Now, the other end, as we were mentioning, Ray Pearson. You know, so much rhythm is so much a part of any sport, especially basketball, and he didn't have the rhythm. He didn't have it in rhythm. Well, Johnson, again, can't hit the front end of a one-on-one. -on -one. Johnson, he struggled from the line all year, shooting less than 50%. Tinsley is fouled. He will go to the line. That foul on Gage. Now see, that's the difference between playing straight belly-up defense and then trying to block the shot. Somebody jumps into you, you swipe down. You know, even if you got a broken nose, you still got to play belly-up defense, and it's hard to stick your hand straight up. Gage got that broken nose here. You see what I'm talking about? He's got his arm straight out instead of straight up. And the man behind the mask with that broken nose missed three games because of that. Gage tough, though, from a quarterback of the Missouri Tiger football team, their leading wide receiver this last year. TJ Sayoye back into the game for the Tigers. Tinsley missed both free throws. Tinsley, surprisingly, not a great free throw shooter, just 62% on the year. Gilbert left open, and he got the three. Oh, the, wow. the Cyclones let him go, and the Tigers have their first lead since the first half. Clarence Gilbert leading the Tigers in the second half. They brought their claws out. They're growling in Columbia. You could say classic, a four overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic. What a good timeout by Larry Eustachie. What he's saying right now is, look, he's got a hot hand. So now, here's how we're going to defend him. You're not going to you're not going to go behind any screens. Trail him, go over the top. Whoever's setting the screen, you step out and show. You make somebody else get hot. But right now, Larry Eustachie's saying, we have got to get Clarence Gilbert out of his rhythm. Clarence Gilbert on that last set. He had a chance to get wide open. It looked like Iowa State got confused defensively and left him free for three. And get confused on somebody else. Don't get confused on Gilbert right now. Even if you end up with two guys on him and you're not communicating, but don't leave him alone. Almost a 10-second yeah. call. Well, the shot clock was at 25, and that's why Missouri's bench just went nuts. Whistle on a foul. Quinn Snyder getting the clarification. Again, the officials do not go off the shot clock for the 10-second call. They actually physically count themselves. So even though the crowd and the bench and everybody else gets excited about the shot clock being at 25, that's not what the officials go by. Well, and that's so hard on the officials because everybody says, okay, let's see, I'm not real good at math, but if it starts at 35 and they cross half court and it's at 24, yes, I know. Uh, that's a violation. The officials have done a very, very good job here this afternoon, and it's going to be important that they keep control of this game because as we go down the line, things are going to get more and more emotional, more heated, and more physical. Well, that's Tinsley for you. He just missed two free throws, but now in this one-and-one -one situation, he hits the first to get the bonus. Checking back in for Iowa State, Jake Sullivan, and checking out the senior, Contrell Horton. Tinsley hits both free throws, and Iowa State seesaws their way back into the lead. Quinn Snyder's club, they've got their claws up, but so do the Cyclones. Four overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic.
So Yoye looking up at the clock. Uh, he knows that Jake Sullivan and Martina Rancic leading Johnson and the Tigers. 58-57 here with 7.43 left to go. Turnovers have been a big part of the story, but Iowa State, 15 turnovers hasn't cost them all that much. 15 turnovers is too many. You know, you throw out numbers and you say that's too many. As a coach, you for, for the game, you want to be right around 10 or 12. You'd love to be in single digits. Rarely do you go a game in single digits. But 10 or 12 in the state, she's okay with it. When you get up to 15 and you still have seven and a half minutes to play, then that's a cause for concern. But you made a great point, Dave. Missouri hasn't necessarily capitalized on those turnovers, have not gotten that many points off turnovers. They really haven't. 58 all Gilbert hits the free throw 23 now for Gilbert make it 24 and he's in rhythm now Gilbert and he only had six first half points he's made up for it here in the second stanza Missouri back in front now Rancic trying to force it into Shirley bad fundamentals if you're going to pass you need to turn your shoulders towards the guy you're going to pass to you can't be double teamed and throw kind of behind the back over the shoulder I mean that, that that's just a bad sloppy that's bad execution and bad concentration and when you're on the road in the Big 12 you can't afford those kind of turnovers if they were freshmen we'd call it a freshman yeah, mistake. that's exactly right tuck that ball under your chin do a reverse pivot face the defense and then make your good solid fundamental pass this on a foul on Iowa State both teams over the limit. That's 10 now for Iowa State, and Larry Eustachy not happy with that call. The Tigers have 18 fouls this half, and Grower, the best free throw shooter on the team, although he's shooting just 79% this year, Grower goes to the line. Brian Grower last year shot 50% from behind the three-point line, was number three in the country. This year he's down to 35, and I heard a lot of people saying, you know, why is his shooting percentage down? Is he struggling? Is he in a slump? No, he's not. What this kid is, he's the consummate playmaker, and he's got so many more weapons. And as his offensive players and the offense develops, he's doing a better and better job of getting other people the ball, and then he's not concentrating on his shot as much. Brower concentrated on his shot a lot when he played high school ball for his dad. His dad now an athletic director at a St. Louis area high school. Brower got a hand on it. Here comes Gilbert. Poked away by Tinsley. Gilbert retraces his steps. Throws it out to Rush. He almost a no-look pass to Rush. A fadeaway no. Pearson's got the rebound. Here comes Tinsley. Tinsley pulls up. Three-pointer. Got it. Just so calm and poised. Jamal Tinsley had a four on two. He's just, he looks like he's in slow motion because he's so smooth, but he's just surveying the court, just looking where the defense is. You played with great athletes. Isn't it something how great athletes can slow the game down? Yeah, I don't know that personally, but I've seen it a bunch. That's what I'm saying. Well, you're, you're right. That, that fast break looked like it. it was in slow motion, and he was just watching everything develop. So, oh yeah, he's got to get out of the paint. He does. Gilbert forced one up, thought he was contacted from behind. And now here comes Pearson all by his lonesome. Cannot give up those kind of baskets. Somebody has got back responsibility for the Tigers. Well, if you're going to send four guys to the glass, then whoever's back, Brian Growler, whoever, you cannot get beat with a baseball pass over the top. Clearing out for Gilbert. On a foul. Watch Tyree Pearson leak out here and look, no Tigers. I mean, Arthur Johnson's the closest guy to him, and I promise you, he doesn't have back responsibility. No. Somebody else has got back responsibility. And then if the person who normally does is caught down low, then you have to communicate, and someone has to look and say, hey, look, okay, if Grower's caught in, then I've got to rotate back, but somebody's got to be back. Gilbert misses that free throw. Now three of five today. Gilbert, who has five trays in this game, averaging over three a game. He's the top three-point shooter in the Big 12 Conference as far as made three-pointers per game. Last year against Iowa State, Clarence Gilbert scored 26 here at the Hearn Center. Oh, 25 now for Gilbert here today in a one-point ball game, a one-point advantage for the Cyclones. Horton spinning in, he spun right into Bryant. 
too much dribbling. Rush, three-pointer, got it. He's like a silent assassin. And he is just, he is so efficient. He scored the first points of the second half for the Tigers. That's his first bucket since then. He's got 18 in the game. He's just so efficient, and he's silky smooth, left-handed, and such a quick release. Look how quick he gets this ball out of his hands. From the time he gets the ball from his waist up to a locked and ready shooting position, he's just so quick. How do you guard him? I mean, a guy that's that big, that strong, that mobile, how can you possibly guard him? I don't know the answer to that. I mean, uh, there's a lot of publications that have described him as the toughest player to guard in college basketball. And I haven't had the fortune, I haven't had the fortune opportunity to see him play until this afternoon. And I buy that. I mean, he is so smooth and quick. And then what adds to it so well is that fadeaway. Kingsley calmly hits the two free throws to tie the game at 65. Well, it's like an overtime period now, isn't it? Under five to go. Three-point shooting has really helped the Tigers out today. They have four more than the Cyclones. Good pass. Well, they got the mismatch inside with Sullivan trying to keep Bryan out of the paint and a foul on Sullivan. Well, good spacing and nice report recognition by Clarence Gilbert. Instead of forcing up a shot, he saw that there was a rotation mismatch. Jake Sullivan down there at 6'1", guarding big 6'9", 240-pound uh, Trayvon uh, Bryant. And what Trey did a good job of that time is he kept the ball high. Lots of times big guys got a clean shot to the basket. They bring that ball down there where suddenly you become 6'1". He kept that ball high and didn't dribble. Ryan can't hit the free throw. Ryan on the year now. He's just three of 11 from the free throw line. Make it three of 12. He's 0 for 2 today. 0 for 3 today. You would expect free throw shooting to get better as you get better conditioning. A lot of times you're tired, you get up to that free throw line, and you've got no legs to get under you. Tinsley, that would go. Rancic is there for the rebound. His turnaround won't go. Rancic again, and that won't go, but there's a foul. Gage whistled for the foul. Clarence Gilbert did a great job of changing the shot of Martin Rancic. Martin Rancic at 6'8". Clarence Gilbert at only 6'2". Rancic turned around, had a point-blank shot. It looked like somebody dropped Gilbert's butt out of a helicopter. I mean, he just came out of nowhere to alter that shot. Well, Rancic with a dozen points today, right at his average. Trying to put the Cyclones back on top. You know, it's interesting, the uh, Cyclones who won last year, 18 and three over the last two years in a Big 12 play, and Larry Eustachius Club's three Big 12 losses have all come on the road and all in overtime. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. I don't think they've won an overtime game since like 1994. Rancic, he gets one of two, and Iowa State on top by one, nearing the four-minute mark. As we were talking about those overtime losses, what we glossed right over is that they're 18 and three in the last two years in the Big 12. Rush can't get it to go into the corner. Rush tried to save it, and it goes out of bounds to the Cyclones. Not only were they 18 and three in the last two years, they have won 42 of their last 47 in basketball games. What a run they've got going. Your name's Iowa. Question. And this year doing it without the impressive presence of Marcus Pfizer. Yeah, that, that's almost like a footnote. Take this team and add Pfizer to it. Ooh, oh, son. Tinsley again. What crunch time. Who would you rather have at the point than Jamal Tinsley? I'm just so impressed with how businesslike they are. I mean, just execute, execute, not getting rattled. It's hard to play in the home center. Now that basket will not count. Gilbert threw it up way after the whistle. The foul on Tinsley. Gilbert will go to the line to shoot two. Tinsley trying to guide these Cyclones to a road win. He has 16 today. Look at the day for Clarence Gilbert. 26 and 7. That's a pretty good week. <laughs> Gilbert, 7 assists, 26 points. 
He has not fouled in this ball game. You know, either one of those line scores, either one of those are impressive. You say, oh, guys scored 26 points. That's huge. You could score no points and have seven assists and be one of the most valuable guys on the floor. But to have somebody that has 26, 27 points and seven assists, that's a heck of a basketball game right there. Uh, official yes. coming over to the scores table. And the foul was changed from Tinsley to Pearson. And that's a good break for Iowa yeah. State. That's being a team player right there. Tyree Pearson, you need to run over there and say, hey, hey it was me. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, Tinsley trying to keep Iowa State ahead of Missouri. One point ball game. We're back after this from your friends at Phillips 66, the performance company. It's like a four overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic. Well, the Antlers, uh, we'll see if they can celebrate at the end of this one. The Antlers on hand. Eustacey was saying he's probably going to get an earful from them today. I think they've been pretty tame. The comfort in game summary, Iowa State, even by their standards, that 61% from the field is good, normally 51%. 61% on the road in hostile environment is awesome, but what's more awesome than that is they're only up by one. Yeah. But how do you shoot 61% and only be up by one? Well, a lot of it is Gilbert. It was 27 now, and 21 of those in this half. Knocked away, Missouri will have the ball. Hey, and that was Arthur Johnson, big 6'10", 270 pounds, down there in the backcourt, down there pressuring Martin Rantikin to throw in the ball away. Gilbert almost threw it right back. Rush working off a high screen. Now they back off and let him go one-on-one -on -one with Horton. And a five-second call, five-second call against Rush. What you have is you have five seconds to hold the ball if you're closely guarded, and you have five seconds to dribble the ball if you're closely guarded. And so you can't square up and hold the ball. When you get the four, you've got to put that thing on the floor, but then you get a new count. You get five more seconds, get the four, pick it up again, and then you've got another five seconds. So in the sense, you really have about 14 seconds with yeah, the ball. But you need to be counting in your head. Yeah. When you square up, you need to be going 1,001, 1,002. There's enough to think about without counting as well, isn't there? <laughs> Horton. Boy, somehow that pass got through to Shirley. I don't know how. Bad passing angle. Shot clock down to 10. You can see the shot clock and the lower left-hand portion of your screen. Sullivan got free from the wing. That one badly missing. Well, good defense that time by Kareem Rush going out and closing out on Sullivan and contesting that shot. Sullivan had seven quick points in the first half. He has 10 for the game. Rush for three. Oh, oh, a little good rebound. Of target. And Tinsley was there saying, this ball is mine. Boy, it's a yo-yo right there. And Tinsley just yanked it away from him. Good hustle going in there on the defensive board. Down to the 220 mark. Pearson wide open. Shirley took one look at him, and Missouri almost got back defensively. But what Paul did well is he squared up and he turned and looked at the defensive man and made him commit. He didn't force the pass. He waited until the defensive player committed to him, created more distance for the pass for Tyree Pearson. And Gilbert comes back and puts a move on Tinsley. Tinsley thought he pushed off. 70-69, the Cyclones. They still lead by one under two minutes to go. The Quinn Snyder's team trying to hang in there with Iowa State. Like a four overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic. Here from the Hearn Center with Reed Geddes, I'm Dave Armstrong. And it's Missouri who trails by one. Iowa State has led pretty much throughout. They trail 10-5. Missouri has come back to take the lead a couple of times here in the second half. But again, Jamal Tinsley, he and the Cyclones just trying to stave off the Tigers today. And a wild attack, especially from Gilbert in the second half. Gilbert for the Tigers has 29. Jake Sullivan, the freshman for Iowa State, he's got 10 in the ball game. But it's Gilbert, the story in the second half. Rush was the story for the Tigers in the first. Well, just like at Colorado on uh, earlier on Wednesday night. Clarence Gilbert keeping the Tigers in this basketball game because Iowa State is shooting 61%. 
Under two minutes now. Let's see how the Cyclones play it. This will be a big win for either of these ball clubs today. For Missouri, a big win and making a statement with young players against an experienced and talented Iowa State team. For the Cyclones, a big road win in the Big 12. Good defense again sure by was. Bryant. He has been really solid down there defensively on the post. Gilbert for three. He was knocked down after the shot. A rebound goes to Soyoye. Soyoye will go to the line. 76% from the line this year. Rancic wants to check back in for Iowa State. Quinn Snyder and his staff talks a lot about it, personal improvement from season to season. And that 76% is up. Last year, TJ shot only 63% from the line. That is an enormous jump, especially for your power forward. Well, this game very well could be decided by free throws now with 119 to go. Both these teams very, very good as a team free throw shooting. Interesting, Arthur Johnson's on the bench now. He's the lone exception for Quinn Snyder. Johnson at 43% on the year. I guess you could count Bryant as well, although he hasn't shot that many, only 13 all year. So Yoye gets one of the two to tie the game at 70. No, but that's a good point. If you're Iowa State and Bryant's got the ball down there, no cheapies for him. Tinsley on Gilbert, and a foul on Clarence Gilbert. And he better be careful or he might pick up a technical as well. Wow, that's about as good as you can defend Jamal Tinsley. Again, Tinsley's so businesslike. Look at him moving his feet. Hands up, moving his feet, moving his feet. And that's pretty good defense right there. Pretty good defense. That's the first foul on Gilbert today. Tinsley got it. We rattled that one home. Tinsley today, 17 points, 5 of 7 from the line. Statistically, the worst free throw shooter for the Iowa State Cyclones, who are in the playing rotation at 62%. Oh, one point ball game. Gilbert pulls up, won't go. Rebounded by Grauer. He'll settle down the offense. You can see the time remaining in regulation. They get it in the hands of their star rush. Flat now. Tinsley took a run at Rush. He got it anyway. Wow. Now what do you do if you're Iowa State? Shot clock turned off. Do you go for the last shot trailing by one? No, you run your offense. You may take the last shot, but run your offense and see if you can get an easy one. Don't just stand out here and hold it. Shirley fouled by Bryant. So Shirley will go to the line with 11.8 seconds to go. What terrific poise and composure for the Cyclones. Martin Ranzik did exactly what he should have done that he didn't do last time. He caught the ball, he squared up, he made the defense commit and post to post pass. And because you have the experience, the seniors on Iowa State, you don't have to call a timeout. That doesn't give Missouri the advantage of trying to set up their defense. So you've got the seniors, you've got the experience, go ahead and take it to them. They did. I've seen an awful lot of situations where coaches just think they automatically have to call a timeout. You know, we're going to call a timeout. You know what? I've seen a lot of situations where they don't get the dadgum ball back into play. One of the hardest things to do at the end of the game in this situation is exactly what you talked about. You call a timeout, that defense sets up, they change, they come in something different, they talk about what they want to do. I think that's great coaching by Larry Eustacey to let them go ahead and execute. And you make a great point. That's what you do when you start four seniors. Absolutely. Surely, by the way, the experience, the most experienced them all we've already talked about Shirley having his degree in mechanical engineering for the 3.6 grade point average the game on the line Shirley at the line two of two today 72% on the year 
So Missouri, I'm sure, are they looking at scenarios? If Shirley makes them both, if Shirley misses one of two, if Shirley misses both free throws. Now, you go ahead and you set up a play right now if you're Quinn Snyder. You go ahead and you set up so you don't have to call another timeout. There's no reason to call. You can. It's a dead ball, yes. so it's not the same situation we were talking about where suddenly you're taking a chance of not getting the ball in bounds. But right now, you practice these situations starting October 15th. When you can practice, you start to think, okay, uh, manager, put 10 seconds on the clock. Okay, we're down by one. Okay, put 10 seconds. We're down by three. So they should have a play that they have practiced for this situation. The crowd will try to make it difficult on Paul Shirley. Oh, man. <laughs> a pressure free throw to tie it at 72. Now you stay she nervously. He can't even watch. See if Shirley can give the Cyclones the lead. And he can't. Tied up. Soyoye has the rebound. The Tigers can go for the last shot on the win. Well, I'd flatten out. I'd give him a screen right there. Gilbert blocked oh. by Tinsley. We're going to overtime. Oh, Shirley, who hit one of two to tie the game. And Snyder's team had a chance to win it at the end. Gilbert, though, he had his shot blocked by Jamal Tinsley. So we've got at least five more minutes to play from Missouri, tied at 72 all. Another overtime test, this time against Illinois. For the recap of that game, here's this Sports Center replay. Missouri, Illinois, it's the bragging rights game, and Mizzou's been bragging for three years straight. Ricky Paulding on the break, drives, gets the layup and the foul three-point play. Tigers up 22-13, their largest lead of the half, but inside, Brian Cook working hard. Line-I, Cook had 23 points in the first half. Second half, Illinois up three. Missouri's Wesley Stokes, the freshman. No, he didn't carry it, didn't turn it over. He grew some hair. Three-point play, we're tied at 56. Later in the second, Mizzou up one. The Illini's Corey Bradford drains the three because he always does. 75th game in a row with a three, upping his own NCAA record. Just more than a minute left tied at 70. Clarence Gilbert, that guy would shoot from the arch if you left him open, or even if you had him guarded, he makes the Tigers up two. Less than a minute. Mizzou still up 72-70. Frank Williams, whose sister plays for the Missouri women's team, banks her home, tied at 72. Last chance for Missouri, 11 seconds left. And they don't hold for the last shot. Brian Grower goes up with it early, misses the three. A lot of that burn off the last four and a half seconds. We go to overtime. Illinois up four. Williams. Williams working against Stokes. Hoop foul on the freshman. A lot up six. And they would win it by a final spread of five. 86 81. Missouri finishes one and two in its Big Ten road trip. Beat. Indiana lost to Iowa and Illinois. Missouri has lost both of its overtime games now this season. The Illini end a three-game losing streak versus Missouri means the seniors for the Illini finally get a win in the bragging rights battle. Now back to our instant classic, Iowa State and Missouri here on ESPN Classic. Somebody's going to get that overtime monkey off of their back because two of Missouri's three losses this year have been also been in overtime. Good officiating right there at the expiration of regulation. I thought that was a good no call. If, if Gilbert would have had possession of the ball, if he would have been more under control, you may have a better argument for a foul. But because he was bobbling and down there had a stick trying to kill it, pick the thing up and shoot it, I thought that was good officiating. Momentum plays such a big part of this game. As you see the Cyclones, again, we point out those three losses in overtime on the road. Is there any momentum going into this overtime for either ball club? I don't know how you say it. It's been such a close game all afternoon. I don't think anybody does. But I tell you what, you can hit a big bucket here. Whoever gets the draws first blood can say hey we got Mo on our side you know what though we say a lot about momentum is rush charges in and count the basket I believe it'll be a foul on rush they will count the basket then we'll go down and shoot two free throws if they're counting the basket 
when you penetrate, when you get to the paint, you better pop both feet. In the Big 12, somebody's going to be set up to draw a charge. Perfect help side defense by Paul Shirley. But you know what Rush needs to do when he sees paint under his feet? Don't keep going. Pop those feet, go straight up, and then you got a basket, and you're going down playing defense instead of watching Paul Shirley go to the free throw line again. Now Shirley, who hit one of two that sent the game into this overtime. And he's missed two in a row. I mentioned about momentum, and really, Larry Eustachius Club had all the momentum last Monday night in Stillwater going into the overtime, and then it was the Cowboys who came back and grabbed the game by eight in overtime. So I'm not sure momentum means all that much, to be honest with you. When you have so much explosiveness, explosiveness on the floor, guys that can pull up and shoot like that. <laughs> Rush, he's just taking this game on his shoulder. All five of the Tiger points in the overtime have come from Rush. Wow. A rush to excellence. Tinsley had a clock. Again, terrific defense by the freshman, Bryant. Tell you what, I'd go right back to Rush. Oh, good penetration. Gilbert had it blocked. He'll go to the line. Tinsley with a foul. That time, bad rotation by the Cyclones. You cannot let somebody start up here. Dribble penetrate all the way down to the basket. Shoot a layup, and nobody be in between him and the basket. Look, right there, Rancic's not there. Nobody on the weak side turns the corner. That's inexcusable. And overtime on the road, that will get you beat. And it's Gilbert going to the line. Tinsley, by the way, has four fouls now. Four fouls on Tinsley. They lose Tinsley, and they're in trouble, and Tinsley will go to the bench for a while. Gilbert, 30 points. His career high, 32 against Iowa. He's got 31 now. 25 of those this half. Six-point Tiger lead. Cyclones need a basket. Back. It's the biggest lead for the Tigers today. And oh, Sullivan, the freshman, <laughs> calmly sinks a running jumper. That kid's not a freshman. Somebody check the transcript. <laughs> <laughs> Sullivan, a guy who shot a thousand jump shots a day since the fifth grade. Oh, Rush. Good up and under. No. And there's another freshman, Bryant, with a rebound. Bryant is so sound fundamentally. He's got to step through the free throw line and hit those. But he got that rebound. He kept the ball high, got his elbows out, not to hit somebody, but just to draw contact, pivoted, threw that ball out to the out to the point guard to set it back up. Good, sound, fundamental basketball. Well, again, Bryant has struggled from the line. 0 for 3 today. And Bryant on the year, just 3 for 13. Good form. Yeah, good rotation, good arch. For those of you that just joined us from the other game, this is a kid that's only been with the Tigers for three weeks. They're just now learning to figure each other out, learning what he can do, and then also conditioning is such a big factor for this kid at this point in his career. Seven points, five rebounds, and he hits the free throw. Well, back to a five-point Tiger lead. Tinsley still out for the Cyclones. Horton running the show. They get it to Sullivan. Sullivan fades away and throws up an air ball. How much longer can you keep Tinsley on the bench? I know he's got four. I get him back in real quick if it's me. Tigers with the ball up by five. Just a clear out. Just letting Cream Rush go to work. This shot partially blocked and a whistle and a foul on Gilbert. Hey, you know we talk about that fadeaways virtually unstoppable. Not that time. Shane Power at 6'5", athletic enough and strong enough to get up there and get a piece of that shot. Well, we are in overtime. 
Iowa State and Missouri here from the sold out and I don't think anybody has left the Hearn Center yet a scintillating contest with Rick Geddes. I'm Dave Armstrong and these two teams have gone toe to toe neither team is led by more than seven today. If you're Iowa State you say look Martin hit these free throws then you start thinking about who to foul. If Arthur Johnson not only, if Arthur Johnson gets the ball you go ahead and hack him. This is your hack a shack time. Go ahead, he's shooting 43%. Go ahead and take a foul on the big fella, but there's not many other people out there that you can foul. Marantz calmly hits both free throws. And it's back to a three-point contest. Gilbert, he can't get it to go. There's Johnson. Oh. Big. You know what? Arthur Johnson was the only Tiger down there on the offensive glass and came away with the ball. What a play by Johnson. Power trap. Good pass. Rancic had it blocked. Rancic over the line. Soyoye with the block. Watch Arthur Johnson just fight for this rebound. And look, he's the only one going to the glass. Now, Sigoya tried. Paul Shelley did a great job of boxing him out. What a terrific rebound by the freshman from Michigan. Mm -hmm. Ranks it four of five from the line today. And Eustachia has just gone down the bench. Well, Rancic at the line, and he says, hey, Jamal, why don't you check back in for us? So here comes Tinsley. Sullivan will get a seat again. 2.19 to go in overtime. Now we'll stay with this free throw, can pull back to within three. And they can't. And Johnson again with another rebound. Gilbert. That won't go. Gilbert's gone cold here of late. Out of bounds. It went off rush. See, he took that shot, and I know Clarence Gilbert's feeling it, but he took that shot, and there's still 20 seconds on the shot clock. That's a shot you take when there's three or four seconds left, but in this situation, if you're Clarence Gilbert, you say, hey, look, we got a four-point lead in two minutes in overtime. Go ahead and execute your offense. Turn it over a few times. Make some passes before you chunk up a 25-footer. Stays in the ball game. Stokes checks back in along with Bryant. Tinsley feeling the double team. Horton. Good up fake. Oh, he got Stokes way up in the air. Good up fake. So Horton has been relatively quiet. That's only his eighth point. Big bucket there, and we've got a two-point contest. And a timeout taken by the Tigers with 1.30 to go. So Quinn Snyder's team trying to hang on in overtime. Eustachie's club showing the grit and determination of a senior-laden team. Back to within two. A four-overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic. Over 15,000 here at the Hearn Center sold out. Look at the crowd here, Reed. I mean, nobody has left. The Antlers, you know they're going to stick around till the final bell has rung. But the rest of the crowd on hand as well here in overtime. 1.30 to go, 82-80 Mizzou. Guarantee you, this time, no shot will go up until there's about four or five seconds left on that shot clock. Yeah, right there. Good patience. And Gilbert throws it up. No. And the rebound comes down to Iowa State. And the Cyclones with a chance to tie it again. They trail by six in this overtime. Tinsley spins oh. in and then got caught in traffic. Don't get in the paint and jump and leave your feet. You just get hung up. Well, you see now 44 seconds. Shot clock is at 25. But you can see them both now. 
got to run that thing down. You know, I said good patience last time. Gilbert still took that shot in there with 13 seconds, but it was a layup. It was point blank, got into four feet. You got to go ahead and take that shot. And the Tigers in that driver's seat up by two right now. Gilbert, boy, that one, he just lost the handle. Here but comes three on two. They get it to Shirley, got it off the glass, wow. tied at 82. Hey, they were really lucky that time. Martin Rancic ran a three on two with the ball over here on the wing. He should have gotten off of that ball, given it to Shirley in the middle of the floor, and then run the lane. Wasn't very conventional, but it worked. Well, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Yastashi, his club coming down on the fast break. We'll talk about that first, then we'll talk about the other point. And right. there it's Shirley kissing it off the glass. Well, what you don't want to do, you don't necessarily want to give the ball to your 6'10 guy in the middle of the floor, but there's no difference in that in your power forward bringing the ball down the floor. I would have given it up. You spread the floor, create more distance, but it worked. Now, what I was saying about living by the sword, dying by the sword, I'm speaking of Clarence Gilbert. He's a guy that brought you back, scored 31 points in this ball game. He hit 5 of 12 from three-point land, but he's thrown up three awkward shots here in overtime. Well, you know, there's a fine line between dancing with who brung yeah, and then going to the well once too often. And what you want to do is just make sure they're good shots, not wild shots, not off-balance shots, not shots with 20 seconds on the shot clock, just good, sound shots. Right now, take the ball down. I don't see many shots go in at the buzzer. I'd put this shot up with three or four seconds to go. I've seen a lot of basketball games won on putbacks. And do you think you and I can add maybe another cliche or two? No, I think <laughs> they got them all. I think, we, I think we got them all here in overtime. They're going to leave it up to Rush. His shot partially blocked. And we're going to go to another overtime. So this time, tied at 82, we are going to a second overtime. We'll be back in a moment. Sold out, Hearn Center watching a thriller. We're going to a second overtime now, tied at 82. Jamal Tinsley and his Cyclones have led by as many as seven. They trailed by six in that overtime and came storming back to tie it. For Kareem Rush and his Tigers, they led by that six-point margin in overtime. Rush still thinking about the missed jumper. He thought he was fouled on the arm as time expired. So can Clarence Gilbert kick it up a notch again? Or will it be the Cyclones to win a big one on the road? Who will have the win here today? And will it be decided in this second overtime? We talked about it a lot in the second half, but especially in that overtime, the first overtime, the Cyclones, again, so poised, so composed. They got down in the hole, down six, eight points, never panicked. Just came back, made good, solid basketball moves to the basket. Blocked by Soyoye. What great interior defense by TJ. Gilbert and the whistle first. The foul down low, that on Rancic. That'll send Bryant to the line. This isn't as critical as it sounds of the officiating, but I hate the new points of emphasis. I just hate the post defense where they're taking Why? away. I just hate it because what you're saying is whoever's got the biggest, prettiest, smoothest, most athletic guys, guess what? You win and we're going to protect you. Well, you know what? Not everybody's big and smooth, and you got to be able to win basketball games by being tough and being physical and being well coached and being mentally tough. And you just take that away and you say, hey, look, what you're going to say is there's no, you can't impede anyone's progress if they don't have the ball. And then once they receive the ball, there can be no contact. To me, that's silly, and it turns it into sissy ball. Bryant misses. He misses both free throws. He's one of seven from the line today. But again, the rules committee has not called me yet. <laughs> I'm expecting my appointment on that committee any day. <laughs> yeah, that's going to come. <laughs> Keep waiting by the phone. Oh, don't Horton. leave him. Horton, they did leave him, and Horton gives the Cyclones their first lead in overtime. Hey, hey. Gilbert, <laughs> he couldn't kiss it off the glass. Shirley has it. Boy, did he get to the rim in a hurry. Now Tinsley. Power wide open from the wing. That won't go. Tipped out of bounds by Shirley. It'll belong to the Tigers. 
Watch the defense by the Tigers. They leave Horton wide open. They, they fake at him, and then they run off and leave. Set up and take a charge right here. Don't come from the opposite wing all the way around, down the gut, and shoot an uncontested layup in double overtime. Now, Soyoye got himself in no man's land. He didn't know what to do. Should he go out and get Horton, or should he stay back? You always go after the ball. That's exactly right. The ball scores. You don't say, well, I had my man. Yeah. Well, tough. The, the ball scores. If you can't decide what to do, what you do is you go ahead and you stop the ball and again, turnovers, 20 turnovers, and to be in double overtime on the road is remarkable. It is. And that's the 10th now for the Tigers. As Tinsley just takes it away, and he pulls up the hand and says, let's run some clock. Power. Looks like he is fouled by a rush. Interesting, the entire basketball game, when Iowa State has got into this set where they're three out, meaning three guys on the perimeter and two guys inside, and they kind of do this dribble weave where they just take turns. Pinter. The entire game, Quinn Snyder's squad has switched those, and they've just kind of zoned up on the perimeter and stayed man-to-man, -man, but just switched them. That time, the Tigers tried to stay man-to-man. -man. Shane Powell was able to turn the corner, get inside the paint, and draw the foul. Power is first free throw. And nothing but the bottom of the net for Shane Power, a freshman out of Indiana. Good looking kid, big, strong shoulders, tough. It says a lot when a coach has confidence and you're a freshman, you're on the floor in double overtime, you've got, you've got your coach's vote of confidence. Well, right you there. can't have a last name like Power and be weak. I like that a lot. And Rush, by the way, his foul, that's his fourth. Rush got it. Boy, that quick first step by Power. A power move for Kareem Rush. And back to a two-point advantage for Iowa State. See if they switch this now. Oh, my goodness. Rancic tracks it down. Tinsley for three. Oh. Big basket for Jamal Tinsley. And look at the Cyclone celebrate. Can Rush answer? Good help by Paul Shirley. Brower, three! And the foul. And it's Tinsley's foul. That's his fifth. Well, you cannot, you cannot overstate the importance of that basket right there. Good hustle to contest it, but what a cold-blooded shot by Brian Brower. I mean, two huge things happen there for the Tigers. Not just the three by Grower, but also Tinsley fouling out of the ball game. And Tinsley just kind of got in a rhythm down here. He stood Clarence Gilbert straight up like a cardboard player, went right around him, got the ball back, and then stuck in the 3 0 lane violation. Not in double overtime. No. No. Mental mistake. Lane violation by the Tigers. Tinsley, though, now an innocent bystander. He fouls out with 20 points today. And now we'll see how the Cyclones react without their leader on the court. Jamal Tinsley, who fouls out. And again, he just hit that big three and then fouls on a three-point shot. It'll be Iowa State's ball. 89-87 in favor of the Cyclones, but 2.25 to go with Tinsley just agonizing over on the bench. Now, can they hang on against this Missouri team? We're watching an instant classic, a four-overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic. The Stacey's Club trying to win a big one on the road and go to 2-1 and one in the Big 12. Missouri trying to start 3-0 and oh in the Big 12, trying to protect that home court, which is so important in this conference. Texas found out today it's going to be tough to win on the road in the Big 12 as Texas went up to Nebraska and lost in Lincoln. Now Quinn Snyder's team, they led by six in the first overtime, trailing by two here in the second OT. Full court pressure now with Tinsley out of the game. Oh, give it to him. Rancic pulls up, got it. Now that was a nice basket, but I tell you what, when someone works as hard as Paul Shirley to get post position, you've got to reward that and go ahead and give him the ball. Now Grower had just hit that big three-pointer with the ball. Looked at another three, but Rancic inside in his face. Go inside to Arthur Johnson. 
Rush fading away, can't get it to go. And it went off Johnson and out of bounds. It'll belong to the Cyclones. Not good execution or recognition by Quinn Snyder's squad. That time, Jake Solomon at 6'1", got rotated off and was trying to guard 6'10", Arthur Johnson. You've got to come, you got to pull the ball out, spread it out, create some distance, and then pound that ball inside when you get a mismatch like that. Now it's Iowa State in the driver's seat, up by four. Low pass, picked off. Tough one for the big guy to handle. Gilbert pulls up, three-pointer, got it! You live by the sword and die by it. Woo! Man, have we got a basketball game in Columbia. A new career high for Clarence Gilbert. He's got 34. to go in the second OT. One point ball game, Horton. That won't go, and there's Thompson for the rebound. Gilbert, that one short. Johnson. Grower trying to track it down. Hey, that just came down to who wants the ball more. Brian Grower wins that battle. What great hard-nosed play by Brian Grower to come up with that loose ball. That's why they love him so much here in Tigerland. Quinn Snyder saying he's such a great leader, but again, it was the determination of Grower on this long rebound. Against two Cyclones, look at him just busted and determined to get that ball, and then a good, strong pivot, and again, square up, face the basket, and look and see what's happening on the floor. So now it's up to Gilbert, who goes to the line. He's 8 of 10 today, shooting two. He can give Mizzou the lead. That one tied it. Gilbert continues to add to his career high. Cannot give the Tigers the lead. Now, definitely one shot. Again, put it up with three or four seconds to go. Give your teammates a chance to go get the rebound. Iowa State spreads out the four corners. You see the time remaining in the second overtime. Shirley can't get it to go. Brower throws it up. We're oh, 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 son! He almost choked that puppy in. My goodness! That was right on target. Do they have enough energy to go another overtime? We'll find out. Dragging themselves off the court. We've played two overtimes. We're going to a third tied at 91. This is the sound. 91 all here at the Hearn Center. What a ball game. And now Iowa State has to play this third overtime without Jamal That's Tinsley. That's exactly right. And remember this too, though. Kareem Rush has four fouls for Missouri. If I'm Iowa State, what I do is I don't forget how effective Paul Shirley and Martine Rancic have been down there. And I go to those big fellas right now with Tinsley over there on the bench. Well, you see Pearson and Tinsley have already fouled out. Nail biting time for Tinsley over on the bench, hoping his Cyclones can win without him. For the third overtime, and Grower hit that big three when it looked like Missouri might die in the second OT. Grower again, a little ball fake, and nothing but net. And just to hear, if you don't love that kid, then you don't know squat about basketball. The kid is just a winner. Ten now for Grower. And Grower to power. And that's pretty sweet. And you cannot give up middle dribble penetration. And that's exactly what Rush did. Rush. That was right on target. Good Shirley. Out. He's got the rebound, and it's just engaged with the foul. Shirley will go to the line. A nice spin move by Shane Power, but watch the dribble penetration to the middle. You cannot give that up. You set your feet up with your right foot up high to pushing baseline. If you're set up that way, then pushing baseline. Don't let him just dribble right over that top foot and get to the middle. 
Shirley who hit one of two free throws at the end of regulation. And we eventually went to overtime about 10 seconds later. Tinsley applauding his fellow senior Shirley. This next one will give him a two point lead if he can hit it. Free throws can win a lot of basketball games for you. As you pointed out earlier, both these teams very good from the line. Gilbert, three-pointer, no. So you, TJ tipped it out, but to power. Now let's see it. He pulls it back out. Looked for an avenue, didn't have one, so smartly they bring it back. They switch out here on the perimeter. Shirley. No. And look at Grower, and they're the smallest guy on the court with a rebound. Nobody for Iowa State that time fought for the offensive rebound. A lot of tired players out there on the floor. People say. standing and watching. What about legs right now? Sioye, he got Shirley back on his heels. Tied it at 95. I can't remember the last triple overtime game I've done. Might have been a decade or so ago. That's because you're an old dude. <laughs> <laughs> and a reach in foul, and that'll send Rancic to the line. I like what Iowa State's done, though. They went to Paul Shirley last time. This time they're going into Martin Rancic, and those kids have been very, very good today. And Larry Eustace has got to be proud of the execution of his Cyclones. A lot of times when you play as many young guys, you've got two freshmen on the floor right now. Yep. In triple overtime in front of this crowd, you don't always expect perfect execution. And whether they win or lose, I think Larry's got to be very, very proud of the way his young kids have executed. And no panic with Tinsley Yeah, yeah that's right. No panic at all, and they haven't at all. I mean, they got down the first overtime. They got down eight, and you could go, oh, oh, oh. No, no, he stood up and said, okay, look, everybody take a deep breath and just execute. Rancic hits one of two. And Jamal Tinsley seeing his Cyclones go back on top by one. Under three to go in the third overtime. Gilbert. That one won't go. Oh, look at the box out by Shirley. Gilbert, 6 of 15 from three-point range. For the game, 10 of 32. Sullivan, that won't go. And a fight for the rebound. They tie up, and that'll give the ball back to the Cyclones. Not surprising to see three-point shots not going in in triple overtime. When you're shooting from that far out, you never really fully appreciate how much your legs or your lower body is part of your shooting. But the farther you move from the basket, the more important that becomes. Triple overtime, you just don't have any legs. Watt hammered right back inside if I'm Iowa State. Oh, boy, a long three. That oh, won't go. No, no. Rancic and Shirley fought for the rebound. They batted it out of bounds. A little surprised by that shot selection from Horton. During the two-minute mark of the third overtime. How much gas left in the tanks of these two teams? Rush, looks like he's still fresh, but power was right there. Gilbert tries a three. He's fouled. He'll shoot three free throws. Take a look at it again, and what happened is Horton just got up under him. Look at him, he's out, he's contesting. And again, you're just not gonna be critical. You can say, oh yeah, you don't wanna foul in that situation, you don't wanna foul, but you can't criticize a kid who's trying to come from the other side of the floor. He's closing out, and he's going out to contest a shot. And again, we talked about the lower legs and three-point shooting. Same thing's true at the free throw line. Well, Gilbert nearing a record for the Tigers for most field goal attempts in a game. The record 
is 35 set by Willie Smith more than a decade ago. And Gilbert that time one of three from the line that ties the game at 96, but not what Missouri was looking for. Good pass. Well, see, you just, if you get the ball that low on the floor, good things are going to happen. And what you say as a coaching staff, you, you convince your kids, if we can get the ball that low, then 75 to 80 percent of the time, you should either A, score, or B, get fouled. You cannot get the ball that low and expect good things to happen if you're on the defensive end of the floor. Lorenzo goes to the line. Bryant not happy about the foul call. That's the fourth on Bryant. Rancic, he goes to the line where he is six of nine today. Make it seven of ten. And Iowa State back in front again. Johnson checking in for Sayoye. When's the last time somebody called a timeout? And it's unbelievable. Each overtime, you get an additional timeout. And I tell you what, these kids are tired. One of two that time for Rancic. So we've got a one-point ball game with about a minute and a half to go in the third overtime. Rush trying to work off a screen. And good touch by Rush. Yeah, he is so, so tough when he can get you down in the paint with his back to the basket because he fades away so well. The crowd who took a little bit of a breather, they're back on their feet. Oh. Sullivan had it stripped by Grower out of bounds. What a play by Grower, though. He almost got the steal. Grower moving his feet, got his hand up. But again, the confidence of Jake Sullivan. I mean, here's the freshman, and he was taking it at him, pulling up to shoot. Tremendous confidence by the freshman. Who will have the will to win this one? Horton. Got it. Strong basketball. Cantrell Horton at 6'1 goes 225, and that time just went right through the defense. Gilbert for three. Nope. And he's gone cold in the overtimes from three-point range. And again, you point out with the legs going with all this action. And he reached around and fouled Horton. Horton shooting 79% for the season from the line. So 30.8 seconds to go in this overtime. If he hits them both, Quinn Snyder's club still has a chance with a three to tie it. How many minutes has Cantrell Horton played in this basketball game? <laughs> I mean, he has been a warrior. He might have run out of eligibility in this game. <laughs> Caffeine free drink for Eustachie. He doesn't need any caffeine with the energy in this game. See, his team got together and suggested that. So they coach, how about no caffeine on the sideline? <laughs> Horton hits them both, and it's a three-point contest. You do not have to shoot from three-point land to do this. If you've got a chance to penetrate, you can draw a foul going in just like a great defense by Shane Power. They block the shot of Rush. Three-pointer. Go! Oh, he got it! Oh, man! <laughs> Son, what a basketball game. Amazing. Lawrence Gilbert is the man this afternoon. To be your best, to have the energy to work hard and play hard, getting great sleep is where it all begins. Introducing the Nautilus Sleep System. The secret is our patent-pending air chambers. Each chamber has two zones that interlock to support and evenly distribute your weight to minimize pressure points around your hips and shoulders. With the push of a button, your side of the bed can change from soft to firm and anywhere in between to give you instant comfort. This innovative design is only available on the Nautilus Sleep System. In fact, Nautilus Sleep Systems are so comfortable and so durable, we back them with a 90-night, 100% satisfaction guarantee at a 20-year limited warranty. You can own one with no money down and payments as low as $30 per month. Get great sleep every night and wake up each morning with the energy to handle anything that comes your way. For a free video and brochure, 
call or go online at greatsleep.com. Nautilus Sleep Systems, leading the way to great sleep. This is a chicken farm, and we're the chickens. The mission. We're all going to fly over that fence, and Mr. Rhodes is going to show us how. The enemies. Stupid, worthless creatures. The breakout. Up and at them, gals. Let's flap. Ain't nobody here but us chickens. We're gonna fly the coop. We're gonna loop the loop. Everybody's here. Chicken run. In an emergency, put your head between your knees and kiss your butt goodbye. Playing this month on direct ticket pay-per-view. You're watching an instant classic, a four-overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic. Will there be a fourth overtime, or who's going to win this one? 18 seconds to go in this third overtime, tied at 101. An amazing, scintillating contest from Columbia here this afternoon. I'm worried about the fans. I mean, talk about fatigue. These, these people haven't sat down for an hour and a half. Horton's got the ball with under six to go. Horton has oh. it stripped. Horton blocks. We're going to a fourth overtime. Justin Gage, what a defensive series. You know what? Right now, Larry Eustachie's mad, but I tell you what, these officials have been very consistent at the end of regulation, at the end of first overtime, at the end of second time, and now at the end of third overtime, these <laughs> officials have held on to their whistles. And so Larry may be mad, but they have been very, very consistent via this entire marathon. Well, Missouri and their entire history that lasts over 100 years have never played a four-overtime ball game. This is a first in Tiger history. So history being made here at the Hearn Center today, and by my recollection, in my 14 years here in this conference, it's the first time I can remember a four-overtime ball game. I have never seen a four-overtime game. Never seen it. You need some help? Yeah. The new Chevy Tracker LT. Just put it in neutral. Now with a powerful V6 engine. It thinks big. Make sure your parking brakes off. Chevy Tracker, like a rock. My sound begins with a musical idea. I let that idea resonate building it into a composition with, I hope, a one-of-a-kind sound. The sound of the Wave Radio CD comes from the Acoustic Wave Guide. What's that? It's a patented Bose technology that won the Invention of the Year Award. It produces sound that's amazingly lifelike and totally unique. You know, sometimes art and technology can come together beautifully the way they do in the Wave Radio CD. Experience the Wave Radio CD risk-free for 30 days. Call and ask about our 12-month payment plan with interest-free payments of just $41.58 a month. Experience it for yourself and let your ears be your guide. Remember college? I bet, I bet you do. I bet you do. Remember the highs, the lows, the pressure, the party? Are you kidding me? You're going to risk your hard-earned cash? Take food off your table? Off your table? Betting on 18-year-old 18 18 kids. kids? You might as well. Throw your money away. Fool. Fool. So watch our games for this kind of this action. This kind of action. Not this. Not this. Because if you're banking on me. To make your day? Don't. Don't. Don't bet on it. Don't bet on it. Every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific is Wednesday Night College Football. It's Game of the Night, only on ESPN Classic. Classic rivalries. Right Classic legends. Classic bowl. The snake does it again. The only place to be for the greatest games in college football is ESPN Classic. Get well connected with Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, and watch Wednesday Night College Football. Every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific, only on ESPN Classic. You're watching an instant classic, a four-overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic. 
Well, Governor Holden, Bob Holden, the brand new governor here in the state of Missouri. And we have watched three overtimes. We're watching a fourth. As Doug mentioned, Iowa State played a five overtime game at Colorado in 69. They won that game. This is the first four overtime game in Missouri Tiger history. So loud right now, Iowa State players can't hear the call. Whistle and a foul away from the ball on Sioye, and that'll send Shirley to the line for Sioye, his fourth. A lot of teams call plays with hand signals. The problem with hand signals are they're easier to scout. You can pick them up, you can prepare better. So some teams go with verbal calls on the offensive end. The problem is you get in an atmosphere like this in a situation in an environment, and suddenly you're going, huh, what? What, what, what do you call, what do you call? And you have a lot of miscommunication. Tinsley, remember, he's been out for the entire last overtime, missed the last two and a half minutes of the second overtime, and now here we are in the fourth overtime, and Tinsley still applauding. Shirley hits both free throws. Paul Shirley today, eight of ten from the line. One of those misses huge. It might have won the game for the Cyclones in regulation. We say might because you don't know how the game would have transpired from there if Iowa State had the lead. Good help, Paul Shirley. Boy, Gilbert with a great pass. Not finishing, Brian, he'll go to the line. See, that was a situation where we didn't, where I, I, I would say did not have help the helper. Paul Shirley comes over, but then a guard's got to drop down. You see, he's just a little bit late. Shane Power's coming. But when you see your big guy go over to cut off the lane, you dive down to the level of the ball, but get inside someone down there on the post. Nice help by Shirley. Rotation a step late. So Shane Power. He has joined Tyree Pearson and Jamal Tinsley on the Cyclone bench. That trio has fouled out of this ball game. And you can see Shirley and Horton each have four. It could be a battle of attrition as we come down the stretch. Well, what stretch is there? We're in the fourth overtime. <laughs> I said, if we stretch anymore, I'm going to pass out. We've got stretch marks here today. <laughs> so Power has fouled out. Zach Fortune. And he gets a little playing time with the Cyclones. He has to check in. Now, if you're this kid, how do you feel? You've been sitting over there for about six hours to end this game. Oh, you feel fresh. Yeah. <laughs> Real the fresh. freshest legs on the court. If, if, that you're fortune. Clint, if you're Clint Snyder and you're the Missouri Tigers, you need to recognize that, hey, if this kid's got a ball, if we get in a situation where we need to foul somebody, there's no way, no insult to Zach, but there's no way that kid can be fresh enough. If he can step up and hit a free throw, then he is one tough cookie. Big free throw from Brian. Remember, he had struggled today from the line and all season long. Brian today now two of eight. This one to tie it. He calmly hits two. And that might be the turnaround for Brian in free throw shooting. I'm telling you, if, if Zach gets the ball, you run a double team at him and just trap him as hard as you can. Good pass. Rancic, go oh, it won't go. And a huge rebound for Brian. Boy, does he go to the hoop strong. Now you've got it to Rush. Rush is fouled and caught the basket. What Kareem Rush has done so well all afternoon is he's faded away from the basket. This time, as he pivots and reverse spins, he goes over his right shoulder. He's a left-handed guy, so that's going to be his most natural move. What an enormous basket for the Tigers. A two-point Tiger lead. Rush can make it three, and if he does, he'll tie his career high at 32. The foul, by the way, on Contrell Horton, and maybe that's the bigger story because Horton has fouled out of this game. That great backboard of Tinsley and Horton, they can't play the rest of today. Pretty soon we start looking down there for a manager that's got high tops on. Rush ties his career high of 32. He did it at Iowa. Tinsley sitting side by side, not where you Stacy would like to see him. Fortune. There goes.
goes that double yeah. team, trying to trap him. Yeah, that's Manny exactly Walker. what I do. Unfortunate yeah. for Iowa State. Well, you, you have to be ready to play, but what a tough situation for this young man. Johnson, no. Rancic's got the rebound. A lot of time remaining. 325 in this fourth overtime. Sullivan now handling the ball instead of Fortune. Give it to him. <laughs> Rancic doesn't give it to him and rolls it home. Every time I say that, Martin says, shut up. I've scored twice now when you said give it to him. <laughs> it's a decoy. That's right. Shirley's posting up as a decoy for Rancic. Now a rush again with Rancic on him. Rush with that step. Shirley, did he foul? Jump ball. Jump ball, good call. Uh, at least according to the Iowa State folks, I don't think Missouri will be so happy with it. The ball will stay with the Tigers on the arrow. Great rotation, had belly up, but he's really fortunate. Once you extend that arm out and it comes down parallel to the floor, you're running a great risk of a foul. It was a good initial position. Got over there and belly up with both hands up. Iowa State fortunate that time. Gilbert all the way out to Sayoye. They'll reset the offense with 18 on the shot clock. One point Tiger lead. Gilbert, he flashed by Sullivan. Just so doggone quick with that first step. Would that be Gilbert and Sullivan? <laughs> I think you're punch drunk. <laughs> so Gilbert, sorry about that folks. We're getting a little, we are getting a little crazy really here in the fourth overtime. Gilbert goes to the line. He is 11 of 16 from the line, and that's 40 points for Gilbert. Good substitution, putting Justin Gage back in for his defense. 41 now for Gilbert. Wynn Snyder concerned over the last 242 of this fourth overtime. Crowd trying to give the Tigers a helping hand. Fortune had it stripped. Here comes Gilbert. Iowa State must do what they've done the entire game and don't panic. Two minutes and ten seconds is still a lot of time with only a five-point deficit. Yeah, but I'm afraid the Cyclones might have run out of bullets. Sullivan tried the three, can't get it. Rancic fighting hard right to the end. He is fouled. Does Eustachie's gun have any more bullets in it? Remember, he's got two big bullets sitting on the bench in Tinsley and Horton. Great defense by Brian Grower. Second time we've seen that this afternoon, almost on the exact same spot on the floor. Right there, if you're Jake Sullivan, I'm not sure you don't go ahead and take that foul as Grower's coming to you to prevent the easy basket. Well, Rancic at the line. Rancic has had a great day, 22 points, 7 of 11 from the line. How about these cycles? They just keep executing. Yeah. Jake Sullivan running the point. I guarantee you, he hadn't run two series at the point for Larry Eustachy all year in practice. You need those guys on the bench, and they just keep hanging there with tough, hard-nosed play. Well, I tell you what, you, if the Cyclones keep hammering that ball in there to Rancic and to Paul Shirley. And look at Horton cheering on. He's trying to really offer some encouragement, especially to Zach Fortune. Fortune traveled once and then lost the handle on another. And a timeout taken by Grauer. See, the rule there is you have to have possession now. of the ball, control of the ball. If you don't have control of it, you can't call timeout. And that's what Larry's saying. He's saying, no, that's a jump ball. That's not a timeout. You're on the floor. It's good hustle. But look, if you don't have control of it, he might have had control. Yeah, he might have. But also may have been just sitting on his numbers. That's like a four-overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic. I would say it has a few timeouts if they ever choose to use them. <laughs> Seven left. Remember, you get an extra one every overtime. <laughs> if you use all those, we won't ever go home. 
And the Tigers with a three-point lead. They'll try to use some clock, but get a good shot. And they go to Rush. He takes the three. Can't get it. And the rebound goes into the arms of Evans. Credit Martin Rancic out there. He's sure not comfortable that far away from the basket on a player like Kareem Rush. I'm so impressed with the Cyclone team, especially with the guys they have missing now fouling out of this contest, and yet hanging in there on the road. Surely, oh, strong move, strong. You know what, get with your Larry Station saying, I'll take that, I want him shooting, but I don't want him coming from the top of the key. Run some cross screens, down screens, get good post-entry passes. Back to a one-point ball game under a minute to go. Gilbert, who had a big three-pointer near the end of the third overtime. Tries another three here, it's short. But Rush had the rebound, poked away by Sullivan. Sullivan looks like he is about to fall over. Well, if Missouri thought after Horton had fouled out and they had a six-point lead that this was ball game, they better rethink. Five seconds. That's a lot of dribbling. Shot clock down to 10. Sullivan won't go. Rebound, Brower. Oh, Paul Shirley just got mugged down there on the boards. They foul Brower, but only eight seconds to go. Brower goes to the line. Oh. Remember, though, if he hits them both, it's still just a three-point ball game. This instant classic is presented by Chevrolet Trucks. Classic, a four-overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th right here on ESPN Classic. So Grauer going to the line again. If he hits them both, it's a three-point contest. And you see at the line, look at all the free throws taken today. Missouri surprisingly only 57%. Normally on the year, they're near 70%. Yeah, shooting 69. And for the season, they had one game at a stretch with three games where they shot like 53%. So normally a very, very good free throw shooting team. In case you're wondering about Grauer today, he's two of two from the line. Grauer, his biggest game in his career came against Iowa State a couple of years ago as Rich Grauer cheers on. He scored a career-high 27 in that contest. As you pointed out, Reed, not called on to score quite as much. Iowa State takes another timeout. Again, trying to freeze Grauer, but that one gives them a two-point advantage. 8.2 seconds to go in this fourth overtime. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the Tigers, as I mentioned, three straight road games, two of them in conference at Kansas State, at Nebraska. And Iowa State goes home to take on Colorado. After that, they go to Nebraska. Tough start for the defending champs. Here's the tough situation for the Cyclones. If they have to have a three-pointer, the only effective three-point shooter on the floor is that gentleman, is Jake Sullivan. That kid can shoot the The problem is Jake's playing point guard. He's going to have to bring the ball up. Ideally, you'd like to have somebody else bring it up, run him off a baseline screen, a double screen. If he's got the ball in his hands, it'll be awful tough for him to get off a good, clean look from the three-point line. There's the three-point advantage. Do you foul quickly and not give him an opportunity for a three? They're not going to do that. Sullivan takes a three. Partial block, and that's the ball game. What a contest, an epic contest here in Columbia today. Quinn Snyder and Larry Estacey hugging at midcourt. They're not hugging, they're holding on to each other. <laughs> they're bracing each other. So they don't fall down. Yeah. This crowd saw the first four overtime game in Big 12 history. And the Missouri Tigers hang on at home and win 112 to 109. They had other commitments. In classic, a four overtime thriller between Iowa State and Missouri from January 13th, right here on ESPN Classic. Brian, have you played in a four overtime game before? Uh, no, I haven't. This is something very special. You know, you've made such big plays coming down the stretch. A third overtime, you hit that big three pointer from the corner, and uh, you also stole the ball a couple of times. Tell me your mindset going into that play. I mean, that's just guts and determination at that point, isn't it? Yeah. 
by the second overtime, I could look in my teammates' eyes and see how alive when we're just drained physically and mentally. And I told him, hey, look in my eyes. I'll try to feed some energy to you. I mean, that's my job on this team is to be the guy, be the leader, and try to get everybody involved no matter how way, any way I can. If it's to feed my energy in the, in the third or fourth overtime, even losing my voice over it. I mean, I'll do what I have to do. You know, this is going to be a bad audition for you to be a color announcer someday. I know, man. <laughs> That's okay. Good job. Good Thank job. You. So, nearly three hours after the opening tip, Missouri pulls it out in four overtimes, Missouri's first quadruple overtime win in the 100-year history of the school. Joined again by Andy Katz. Andy, offensively, Missouri, of course, a two-headed monster, particularly evident in this game, of Missouri's 112 points, 75 scored between Kareem Rush and Clarence Gilbert. However, they got help from a third source tonight. Yeah, and the amazing thing about that 75 points is Clarence Gilbert had six points in the first half. But the third source was Brian Grohr. He hit a huge three-pointer when it was 89-84. Iowa State in the second overtime with 225 left. As you saw earlier, that three-pointer fouled out Jamal Tinsley. And Quinn Snyder told me that Grar's play was really the X factor in this game. And when they can get that kind of point guard production to complement Rush and Gilbert, Missouri's going to be a tough out, not only in the Big 12, but in the NCAA tournament. But just three days later, the Tigers trounced by Kansas State. How much was a hangover? Well, Quinn Snyder initially talked that he didn't think that was an excuse, but it was. I mean, this team was mentally exhausted. They go to K-State, a team that had beat Iowa at home, so they were dangerous, even though they're looked at to be at the bottom of the Big 12. And Missouri just wasn't ready. And he said, actually, he thought that his team will benefit from that because they're a young, inexperienced team. They can see that they got to show up every night, not just at home. And certainly, they can't rest on a quadruple overtime win and think that they're just going to go to K-State and win. Iowa State, Missouri, the rematch, February 11th on ABC. How do you break it down? I think it's going to be five overtimes. No. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, uh, Iowa State right now is going to be obviously looking to avenge that loss, but that's going to end up being a key game for the Big 12 title for Missouri, for Iowa State in seeding. Key factor will be obviously can Missouri continue to score in the post that they were able to in the overtimes that they weren't able to do in the first half. Andy, thanks a lot. Thank you. For Andy Katz, Charlie Steiner here, and thank you for watching this instant classic here on ESPN Classic. So long. You're watching ESPN Classic.